All right. And we are live. The last word with Lord Cognito and Ebontis. Friday evening campfire. What's going on, E? Just a regular day, right? Yeah, nothing happened this week in the world of Destiny. Absolutely nothing. Um, Boring. <laughs> uh, yeah, completely. So no trailers, no news, no controversial topics. No, we got a lot of stuff to talk about, but we had an awesome guest joining us today. So do what you do, sir. Let's bring this man into the campfire. Let's go. No doubt. What is up, guys? Last Word Podcast here. And today, we are back in front of the Destiny campfire for some more looter shooter discussion. I'm extremely excited about our special guest. So you had to do it get, to me. I had to do it to you. So <laughs> we go get right into it. <laughs> I want to introduce a lord who is not only one of the coolest titans and most down-to-earth YouTubers in real life, but his passion for the improvement of the Destiny franchise is truly unmatched. Whether it be his detailed weapon and raid guides or informative commentary, all done with outstanding production values. Damn. I gotta Introducing. Get you, uh, you ain't uh, finished. Oh. <laughs> Introducing the creator and host of the Cactus HD YouTube channel and co-host of the Real Gamer Hour podcast. My fellow UFC brethren, Lord of Twitter memes, and with Chick Cacus, the most creative promoter of Advanced GG, <laughs> live from Alberta, Canada, and making his return at the realm of the last word. My man, Lord Rick Cacus, how you doing, sir? Got to bring I'm you doing in, right? Well, dude, I gotta, I gotta get you to do my intros normally. Damn. <laughs> Just be like, all right, uh, got your 10 second outsourcing fee. Check. All right, sweet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, what's, what's dude. What's going on, bro? How you been, I'm man? doing well. I'm doing well. I'm glad to be back. And uh, yeah, dude, cra- it's been a wild week for Destiny, man. so there's a lot of stuff to talk about. Absolutely, man. So much going on, man. Good to see you. So I know you, you said you've been playing a little bit of Genshin in there, but we, are we back to now getting into full time? I know I know. there's been a lot of Postmaster controversy with you uh, lately. So. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk about that. Dude, I, I literally was just like, hey, they should fix the postman. They should make it so that it shouldn't, a higher rarity item shouldn't get pushed out by a lower rarity item. And Seems what I learned reason. is, no, I'm an idiot. Idiot. <laughs> How dare you just use a third party app after every activity? What are you, dumb? Like, just, just, uh, after every activity, go to the tower. That's normal. That's no, that's not an no. issue. All right? It's just How, not an issue. How that's dare the... you demand stuff in game, sir? How dare Listen, you? Fixing the postmaster would hurt. I, I no. never actually got, I never actually got an answer on that because the answer is nobody. nobody. But, exactly. But, uh, the, the, like, it's like, oh, if they fix the postmaster, then, then all the other glitches will run wild in the game. It's like, bro, they can do more than one thing at once. Like, I'm sure Bungie could, it's like, no, guys, we fixed Postmaster, so you know what? Beyond Light delayed again. I can't, sorry. Like, it was just the only option. It's Rick's fault. We had to delay it's it to my fault, June. Dude. It's totally his fault, yeah, Postmaster. It's my fault. No, I mean, I live in that state with, like, either full characters or full Postmaster constantly. And then with Umbor Engrams this season, especially, it's been awful. So, no. Because they give like, shaders, too, and they just, yeah. like, really fill that up. Like, what happened to me is I missed one chest, one strike chest. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got stuck in a loading zone and missed it. And it was like four, like, blues, uh, legendary, and an umbral. And then, of course, it drops the tokens and the planetary mm-hmm. resources, which, if you don't collect them, they go to your postmaster. So it's like, yeah, no, Bungie, 100%. Push out my 10 Ascendant shards and introduce, you know, two <laughs> dust like shards. That, that's. <laughs> Well, they that's really want to have the hierarchy you're looking for. Yeah. yeah. And, and but again, it's like people need to understand it's not about me. I'll get my shards back. If mm-hmm. you're a new player and you're just like grinding strikes and you don't know about dim, like you just got it from the Xbox Game Pass, you see a legendary, you know it's going to the postmaster, you don't know it's gonna get pushed out by the blues you missed. Mm-hmm. Like I, I feel point. like those are the people getting screwed. And it's like, you know, it one bad experience can can ruin. Like if if you're oh. miss an exotic drop or lose something Ooh. important as a new player, you're gonna be like, I'm gone. Like I'm out of mm-hmm. here. Yep, that's a good point. That's a good point, man. He, he ain't lying. No, it's like I mean, new players going into Beyond Light. We talked about this previously. The story is gonna be a little weird if they go play for a second and be like, who's this K dude we see for like five seconds? New exactly. players are gonna be in a weird space. They do have Fast and Furious Man coming in, which will be good. Um, yeah. They actually get to spend some time on a, one of our newish destinations that we get to see, but. I am kind of curious to see how the new player experience is for Beyond Light. At least we get to go see what the Shaha experience is going to be when we get in there. So that'll be kind of fun. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No doubt, no doubt. But man. no, like for this week, we had so much stuff come in in 
And I swear it was just like, oh, you thought this was it? Here's an awesome trailer with an awesome song that nobody could probably play for copyright strike reasons. But like, yeah. there was way too much fun. There, but the the real reason beyond like got delayed is because Bungie had to make like 45 trailers for <laughs> this expansion. Like, honestly, it's like gear trailer, uh, yeah. story trailer, another story trailer, launch trailer, pre-launch trailer. It's like, bro. bro. Bro, is there anything we don't like, know about the game? Have they just played it all for us at this point? Or uh, I mean, <laughs> a little bit, but we'll cover that once we get there. Mm-hmm. Um, but the biggest thing we got was the Vidoc. That's what started everything. And I just kind of wanted to get your guys like, what was like a couple big standouts before we're going to go through some pieces of it? What were some huge surprises and spoiler warning for anybody watching this or listening? Everything's on the table from the Vidoc. So if you're going spoiler free at this point, you might want to duck out now because yeah. it's all on the table. So just FYI. But for both you and Rick, you get to go first. Seriously, what stood out from the Vidoc to you? What's got you the most hyped so far? What you feeling, Rick? What's going on? Man, to be to be honest, like I'm gonna disagree with you a little bit. Like I felt like the Vidoc while it was awesome. Like if Ooh. you were someone who was paying attention to the previous trailers and all the twabs and stuff, like I was, like there wasn't necessarily any huge new information in the in the Vidoc, mm-hmm. um, aside from the season of the hunt stuff. Like they mm really didn't talk about that at all until the Vidoc. And is you almost kind of forget that like Beyond Light is also launching alongside at like a $10 still like season. And then you'll have these hive, not cryptoliths, whatever they're called, kind of cryptoliths. Yeah, yeah I can't remember things. the name. And they, they, they either come down or they spawn up uh, yeah. from the ground. And then mm-hmm. there's like a, a hive boss and stuff. But the interesting mm-hmm. part is like, that kind of that's really all they revealed and it might be as simplistic as that like if we think back mm. to season of the undying it was pretty simplistic you had the vex offensive right yeah that's pretty much it, you pretty had much the, it. the vex offensive was the activity yep. and it had some gear associated with it and that was pretty much it right um this time we kind of have the same thing with those hive structures mm-hmm. and but the interesting part is like you have this seasonal quest that you start right. and that's it. Like it starts on the 17th, I believe. Mm-hmm. And unlike all these other seasons, you know, you have the season and it goes away this time. Apparently you're just going to be able to do that whenever. Yep. So like mm-hmm. you can go back potentially in like you get in, you can get into destiny two in June by season of the hunt, maybe, and mm-hmm. then start doing cryptos. Yeah, like I'm, me, I never like, actually thought about the buying of seasons because they said that's yeah, like, the question. Yeah, you can like, do it later, but do you can you buy an old season? That'd right. be weird. That is a good it question. It would be weird. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, by icons like Iron Banners, everybody, Dawning's everybody, but specifically those like the, you know, the older icon basically. Those are like the season mission begins, the Wrathborn hunt begins. Those specifically are, and you're like. Do you, and again, it's also, you have the tie to the artifact as well. And the reward that's got that same icon. It's like, you're not going to go buy an old artifact because that's going to stay. But how do you kick off the Wrathborn missions in June or something? That's potentially you can just like, so the interesting thing is if you look at the Wrath, uh, the season of the hunt stuff, it looks like it's almost like a new public event. Like it's just kind of happening in the world. Yep, right. It's not like its own activity similar to Vex Offensive. Right. So maybe, yeah, it's just like literally they're happening all year long. And you have to maybe buy it this season. And when you buy it, you get the loot associated with it. Right? Probably. And and you Mom can like think. earn loot drops. or other, You can still participate, but you won't earn like the exclusive loot for it. Potentially. Right. Like, is that, I don't know. It's a little confusing, to be honest. It, it, it is a little confusing. It is a little confusing. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, that, it, it, I'm curious about that. Like, because before we had like the, what is it? The a la carte kind of thing going on. Yeah. And stuff yeah. like that. So... It is going to be interesting to um, see how it's handled. What I want to ask you, um, Rick, as far as like narratively stuff, anything narratively with the trailer that hits you, you know, specifically, positively well, or negatively. Well, again, we kind of knew Aldrin was coming back from a while ago uh, mm-hmm. because like the symbol shown in a triumph screen was the symbol on Aldrin all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, he's like for sure back, which is an interesting one. People mm-hmm. keep saying like, oh, he's the crow now. He doesn't remember who he is. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm going to, I'll jog his memory with, you know, to the back of his head with, uh, with a falling <laughs> guillotine. Like, I'm a, I don't care. Like, oh, that's, a, that's a great sob story, dude. You still got my Glock to the back of your head, dude. <laughs> Thanks for killing my, but, no, uh, Vanguard. Dude, Sir Rick has no chill with Aldrin. None. <laughs> no chill with Aldrin. Yeah, like, None. come on, dude. Boo-hoo. Yeah, boo-hoo. Yeah, sorry. That's too bad, dude. But like. No, it, it is kind of interesting that they're bringing him back. Mm-hmm. 
Because, you know, especially with their relationship with Marsov, who's also still alive yes, and, yes. and had a big part in Forsaken to play. And we talked to her. Mm-hmm. Um, so that relationship could be interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, yeah, it's a cool, it's narratively bringing him back. I did mm-hmm. think it was really funny where like Osiris is like this super powerful see, warlock. See, see, see. Yeah. see and then Knight's be... like, and Knight just like <laughs> knocks him down. It's like, okay. It's like, <laughs> Y'all know I'm a warlock. Y'all know how I feel about Osiris and the disrespect. Osiris you know the guy's just like smacked by Knight and just Yo, like, bam. I even go He literally front. got backhanded and he's like collapsed. He's like, yeah, ah. and then the gun, the gun fell to the side and then, yo, somebody did my man dirty. They put the life alert on the box. <laughs> Oh God! I said, "How they gonna do my man like <laughs> That's that?" That's a good one. But for Aldrin, I'm gonna uh, let it slide. I'm gonna let it slide because oh I wanted to see Aldrin go by. So but I continue. Ask, continue. I was actually gonna ask you guys a question. Would you have rather? This is the point where that like, how much stuff do people want to see in trailers? Mm. And this is always the question of what would you like to see, and it's the toss up of. I know we have data miners and stuff like that, so part of it I understand is. Like on day one, some data miner is going to get in there and it's like, if you go through the story mission, you're probably going to see it fast anyway. But I would much rather go through that little cinematic moment, which looks to be in the Hive Shrine of Oryx or whatever that place is called, where that uh, strike used to be. And it looks like he's sitting up there and you're like, oh, it's Osiris. You're talking to him for a second. He gets knocked down in game to actually see Aldrin walk out. For me, it would have probably been better. It's like I got I lost my shit in the middle of the trailer. Yeah, Like I did. So I lost it in the middle of that. But. In game, we don't feel, I don't feel like we get that many moments in game anymore because they're all done in marketing. Yeah. So I was just kind of curious if you guys cared, if you'd like to see it held or kind of get what the they're doing. The interesting thing is your opinion is objectively the wrong marketing approach. And, oh, and I know. I hate, it no, I, I get they, that. Yeah. It, it's, it's, I'm not saying that you're necessarily like, well, you are wrong in terms of the marketing. It was just a weird <laughs> thing. No, no, like, I'm not trying to be mean. Like, I, yeah. I almost have the same opinion, mm. but. Uh, I remember there was a study done on movie trailers, right? And mm-hmm. and it's the same thing. You watch an Avengers trailer and it basically gives away the entire like m- movie yep. or mm-hmm. it leaves maybe some stuff out. But a yeah. lot of trailers, it's like two minutes and 50 seconds and it gives the entire plot. But they've done studies and they realize that when people know more going into a movie, mm-hmm. they like it better. Like they're more likely to see a movie they know right. more about if it's very ambiguous and confusing right. yep. um, and secretive. That often doesn't work. So right. I, the same thing would be true for these type of gameplay trailers, right? Mm. Where they're, they, it's actually better for them from a marketing standpoint to reveal more stuff. Right. No, Which, I of mean, course, is going to piss mm. people off. But it's just like the reality of just, I guess, how that works. Yeah, I mean, you make a valid point. I mean, I, I definitely understand where he's coming from because... You know, from a we're we're the hardcore, right? We we love to have those. Oh, yo, you seen when such? You know, what I'm saying like those yeah. moments no. are insane. But you're you're also right, Rick. Like I understand it's this balance, right? You want to mark? They want to market the game. They want to get people hyped for this DLC to get people to pre-order or whatever it is. And like you said, they, it must be research data that's showing. Look, even if you give that Aldrin tease or whatever it is, right? As, as amazing as that would have been in game and we would have knocked our socks off, that will now get a person who may have stepped away from Destiny and say, oh, yeah, I remember that guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Into it. And then it builds the hype. So it's this fine line that they got to walk. And I definitely I definitely feel for my man E because I know where he's coming from. But from a marketing standpoint, it was like, because remember, remember E, me and you had this discussion with Cage death, for right? Second. Yeah, similar we thing. Was like, Damn, I was like, damn, they, they it was it up. Like, it was a huge deal, but everybody's going to want to log in to see what happens. So it's like, it's a marketing piece. Again, that's a perfect example. Could you Mm -hmm. imagine if they didn't reveal that? And then just like you watched Kate die at the first part of Forsaken, (laughs) you were like, oh my God. Dude, that would literally, that would be the most shocking moment of Destiny history, honestly. But they, but they used it in all the marketing stuff yeah. because now it's motivating people to get in there mm-hmm. and avenge Cade and stuff like that. Like, so that's, that, it, it is kind of like an interesting thing is yeah. how mm-hmm. much do they reveal? I mean, like the raid, they're revealing almost nothing. There's been yeah. a yeah. few snippets uh, There's of like gameplay. a landing zone and like a walkthrough because there's only a few places with like six people yeah. I've seen in the trailer. But mm-hmm. yeah, like somebody who I was talking to in chat because I was talking about this the other night too. And they said, mm-hmm. if they want to get hype for Aldrin, but for me, you also see like, He's the one dealing with Osiris. He's standing there next to Spider. He's walking you through the tunnels. Like, they laid out everything. If they could have just said, hey, Shadow of the Hunt, bring in a back characters from the past, and you see, like, a glimpse of him do something to know that he's coming as opposed to he's here, 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 and you're like, you know everything. Would have been kind of gift a little more question, yeah. but... Yeah. Yeah, like, did they have to show the cinematic of him... Right, right, right. right. ...coming out? That's a good or point. Or could they... 
could they have just showed like him turn around and just a quick of his quick. face and then yeah, end yeah, 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 yeah. I feel you, I feel you. I feel yeah, you. you could argue that that would be good too, and it would mm-hmm. potentially be a little bit more hype behind it. Yeah. So interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not for for me, I mean, look, man, the the, the Vidoc, I, I was feeling it, man. Like for me, it was more it was of dope. a, it was more of a payoff. To, like we've always complained, Bungie has all these loose threads that no one go that goes nowhere, and so it it was almost overwhelming because in the beginning it was like, all right, Drifter, you know, the Stranger. Oh, dude, they and, all look so awesome. Sorry. Yeah, like everybody rocking in the beginning, <laughs> right? So I'm like, okay, cool. Then you got the Aramis thing going. Now we all know Aramis is a damn sub boss. We already know what's going on. But so sad. I story did, boss. Yeah, yeah, story boss. You already know what we gonna get him out of. But I did think it was cool, the motivations, riling up the the fallen. Look, we're the, you know, we're gonna take this power. We're gonna, you know, we've been betrayed by the traveler kind of deal. I felt that aspect. <clears throat> obviously, we didn't even get Varix too much in this one. Mm-hmm. But the thing that was dope was obviously I'm gonna be real. Y'all know I'm a big old Cyrus Warlock fanboy. I didn't think I was seeing him this expansion. So when I did see him, and I was like, oh, he's a major part. I'm like, he's dealing with Hive. It threw me off. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Now I ain't like my man get slapped. <laughs> the way he got slapped, you know, what I'm it was disrespectful. It was funny as hell. I got to eat. I got hold the L on that one. Hey, I'm but, gonna. I'm just gonna say this. Osiris yeah. may have got slapped. Whatever happens to Zavala in the end, it's not gonna be pretty. So whatever yeah. happens to Zavala is probably not gonna be but great if he ever goes down. Was, the thing that was crazy for me was that not only do you have all that going on, he's actually there was a, a screenshot of him. First of all, you got two Cabal with Zavala. So Cabal, Cabal, Osiris, yeah, I and, and get, think. Yeah, get, that might be a little overblown because he's with Osiris. They could just be in a simulation. Like it's possible. It, it's possible. Well, I guess Mercury is going Gone. away. Yep. But like, I mean, that's how I took it. I was like, maybe mm-hmm. there he like meets them in a simulation or something. I, I don't mm-hmm. know how that works. Or mm-hmm. maybe that's with Callus. Callus's uh, boys, right. and he's like, sums up. We got to see, right? We got to see. Is it Red Legion? Is it regular? It was interesting yeah. that like in the Luke Smith interview, he said mm-hmm. that. For say, uh, sorry, Beyond Light mm-hmm. is taking Destiny Two back to kind of where it was originally intended. Yes. He says that, and like, yes. and Europa was Oof. one of the earliest concept arts, and now it's like, okay, if this is like Bungie's finally like, you know what? There's no Activision. We can finally mm-hmm. execute our vision for like what I mean. The Crow was yes. the original kind of character yes. you saw, and you saw in the Cosmodrome. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, in the Cosmodrome, him as the Crow in like the teaser before it ever came out so it's like they're kind of going back to what they were and so now it's like okay every old piece of concept art you gotta and like old what was it supposed to be is now mm-hmm. like oh hold on like this yeah. is quite interesting no it's it's awesome and, and, and the thing i like about it is again we got all these i didn't expect the sheer amount of impactful characters all being involved the way it's been prior has been you know you just deal with one or two and that's it now it's like all these threads going on. So I'm I'm seeing, I want to see how they pay that off. So for me, the narrative part was lit. The Deep Stone Crypt, I definitely want to know what's going on with that because that's where the Exos are made. So that was cool. We got a little bit more on the stasis thing. But yeah, I mean, I thought it was it was solid. I thought it was really solid. You know, I got, we're going to talk about Season of the Hunt and all that good stuff. But um, E, like I know, because I did a live reaction. I think you, you oh, waited because you was at my, work. I posted yeah, yeah. my live reaction because, yeah, I was like, I was at work and of, of course, they've been started dropping these trailers early and earlier in the morning. I'm like, I do work morning. I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah, oh, I'm, yeah. Like, I'm sitting yes. here at like 9 a.m. I'm sitting at work. I'm like, I really want to go home. But I just, I closed Twitter, shut my phone down until I came home and I was like, haven't seen anything. Smart. And I was going through and I was like, a couple big ones. For one, it was the Cabal sitting there with like Osiris and Zavala. I was like, I just need to understand how this situation is happening. As you said, is it a simulation? Yeah. Are they working with them in some way? Zavala and Osiris, like Osiris got and that relationship. Out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Those two with him kicked not... out the tower, so yeah. those two are I mean, cool. So yeah, yeah. I, I really do think it could be like a callous situation. Like he, I mean, you know, mm-hmm. we're kind of tight with those cabal. We, I mean, they don't fight us when we load up there. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But were they? But were they Red Legion though? That's the thing. Was it regular cabal? Is it because remember Red Legion is a very specific faction for them. Mm-hmm. Now that's the thing. Like, and it, it's it's yeah. so much going on. I got so much questions there. But oh, continue. I know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we work with the fallen all or all, all the time. Uh, like Varix, Mithrax, yeah. Varix. There's a bunch of fallen allies mm-hmm. because, like, every faction has kind of their own. Except mm-hmm. for the hive, we just want to kill everything yeah, basically. Absolutely. But like, you know, the fallen are not purely bad, and the cabal kind of aren't purely bad either. They're just kind mm-hmm. of. There for the the glory and war type of thing. Yeah. Well, they and followed so, what was it? They followed like the Shield Brothers' distress signal to right. kind of us, right? 
I remember from yeah. like Destiny One, something like Essentially, that. Essentially, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. But, but yeah, yeah, I was gonna say for me, like it was honestly it was really cool to see like Elsie or the Stranger, or whatever you want to call her. She was kind of a bit of a beast in the trailer, just like jumping around, yeah. cloaking, and everything. She was working. Yeah, she's getting busy. She's but getting for busy. me, like when I saw Eris, like. And then in the trail, the recent trailers, well, when she pops the wall, when she's rolling a little ball on her arm and when she's actually mid comp, she's just been like a storyteller for us, a standing figure, not moving to finally see her mid combat action. Be like, dude, yeah, she's still yeah, got her yeah. chops on her. It's like, yeah, she's don't, busy. Yeah, she's working. The drifter does nothing in the trailer. Just oh, like, like guys. <laughs> he, he still just Typical. does his talking. Um, yeah. yeah. And then Too we got to see Aramis literally punch the servitor to really get deep into their Trying to, you know, cut their ties with the servitors, which is kind of yeah. like their lifeblood and stuff like they're that. They're dependent on them, right? Yep. Yeah. Like, that's a symbolic moment for a, a fallen, right? Yeah. That's why they all kind of mm-hmm. freaked out, because that's kind of their source of their lifeblood, basically. So mm-hmm. that was legit. And then, of course, for me, it was just like, when they showed Aldrin, for me, it was hype, just because I was like, they're finally bringing him in. We finally get to see what's going on. Because it's been two years. Two years finally seeing some of this stuff pay off, which is really, really cool. So Crow. I was like, as for like stasis powers and Varix and mm-hmm. the stranger and Aramis, like we've kind of seen, as you said, about 50 trailers going into this thing. But mm-hmm. yeah, those couple big ones. And then the la- I was just, I was going to say my last finish. one was season of the hunt. Be the fact that they said the words Zivu or as that, in the yeah, third, okay. yeah, yeah, we did. We the did, third, yeah. like hive God. So, I mean, you had mm-hmm. all Oryx we killed. Savathun's still doing her crazy, powerful death battery, setting mm-hmm. up the dominoes thing they basically said in the trailer. And now we're getting some hint of Zivorath getting in the mix too. So building to 2021's like expansion, that's yeah. that seems like the big one. Dude, that, how many how point. many of these hive gods do we gotta kill though? Like at some <laughs> point all of them. <laughs> dude, honestly, at some point I'd be like, you know what? It's not worth it. Like I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> you they, don't want to kill Zol in a strike again? <laughs> yeah, like honestly though, like it, so Crota, I know he's not like kind of a god, but Crota, then Oryx comes and controls all the taken, and we're like, peace, dude. Kill him. <laughs> and then Zol. And then um mm-hmm. starts with an N. Nakris? He's, Nakris. 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 Mm-hmm. he's not is he not, he's not really quite a god, god level, but, yeah. but he's not, almost yeah. he's like a necromancer, like, almost, yeah. Almost, dude. Almost, yeah. He's uh, beast. So so again, it's like it, the extended god family. <laughs> and it's like, dude. <laughs> I mean, no wonder, first of all, no family. wonder they're mad at us. Yeah, of I mean, course. We, oh, yeah, we're like, just chopping that family tree down. Half half we kill yeah, exactly. daughters. Like, we, like, we, we wreck, and Oryx's the daughters, thing. yeah. But in fairness, they were, like, right next to Oryx yeah. right before it's it showed up. It's just bad up, company. So like, you got to right. be careful who you hang out with. That's just what that is. Uh, yeah, at some point, like, is it worth <laughs> it? Is it worth it to take, what are they trying to do, even take over Earth? <laughs> I, I guess kill the Traveler? <laughs> Yeah, yeah man, I guess that's the source thing. of the light versus the darkness. Mm-hmm. And if they're all from like the deep and the source of the darkness, maybe. But again, hopefully now as we're finally getting to see some of these stories, we actually get like to see what that's is, all about. The universe is pretty, I don't know, big. Like they could just <laughs> go somewhere else. Like I'd be like, dude, we're losing a lot of guys here. Like, oh. why don't we just yeet off to some other undiscovered <laughs> planet? And we'll just chill there. Like, I don't, we don't have to mess with these guardians anymore. <laughs> these guardians seem alone. weirdly powerful. I don't powerful. know why. They just don't want to yeah. die. Mm-hmm. Yeah, literally, dude. Yeah, but the thing, the thing I think that threw me off with the whole, um, what is it? I can't pronounce that thing. He's going to help me every time. Who? Zivu, whatever the hell. Zivu or F? Um, Yeah, okay. Yeah, the Her, sister. <laughs> the sister, right? Yeah. I didn't think we would get that story beat at all, to mm-hmm. be honest, especially in Beyond Life. So my thing was, and the way they make it, it seem is like, the ambitions of this, this sister is different from Sabathu. So that's another... She's the god of war for them, basically. Right. It, 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 it was interesting. I didn't expect that th- story. To, so again, it's so much. My yeah. only concern, if well, I got to like, nitpick... Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, right. Oh, no, no go ahead. No, I was going to say, my only concern, if I got to nitpick, is there's so many people going on. There's so much threads going on. How do they pay this off? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because obviously this campaign, it looked like it's going to be rocking. We're gonna see how long it is, but again, I just I'm, I'm a, my only nervousness is again classic Bungie. You know, we just want to make sure we get proper payoffs for certain things. Do I do I expect everything to conclude? No, but I would like it done cohesively and stuff that makes sense instead of somebody just making a a, a cameo appearance and then you don't see them. You know what I'm saying? Like I want it built right, and that's my only concern. But get it. Well, I was just going to say, like, okay, so the God of War isn't even around yet? Like, what are the other people have been doing? Seems like war to me. Like, what? <laughs> this one's going to be mega war. It's like, mega. dude, we literally have already been warring with the Hive constantly. But it's like, now the God of War is here for more mm-hmm. war. It's like, I don't know. I, I'd like to see... 
the interesting thing is like what so now we embrace the darkness mm -hmm. it's like okay so why do you still want to kill us if you're on mm -hmm. the darkness side i mean i guess yeah the hive just need to kill everyone mm -hmm. i guess mm -hmm. it's interesting it's interesting and right I, the, and the payoff seems to be this witch queen and then light fall light fall and right. it shows the big pyramid and it shows the sphere, the tower behind it. Yeah, so right. it's like basically the, the pyramid ships getting to Earth, getting to the Traveler. Mm -hmm. um, no, I feel what you're saying. You're making a good point because E, like, in a sense, we're, we're, I mean, they are confirming we're going to embrace the darkness and use this against them, right? So again, to, to, to Rick's point, if we are doing that action, right, then why are the rest of them beefing with us? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're basically joining with them at, yeah. at, in some regard. Right. So the vibe I also get, is they, they kind of allude to factions in the sense of some races saying, hey, I don't know. Some races like, yo, we should embrace it. You see that in, in exchange between Zavala and Eris, like, Zavala's like, nah, fam, like, we're not going over. And she's like, no, we need to see what's going on. So it, I think that my guess is that's what they're trying to set up, this whole you know, all the different races and they're all the different groups having different motivations as to whether accept it or not. What, what are you thinking? Uh, I mean, shout out to some of the lore people who are a little smarter than me on this in my chat. I yeah. mean, they're basically the chat talking about... Saying, they're like, Infinity War! It's going down! Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's what it seems like we're getting to. With Savathun, yeah. that was the thing when we had Bife actually on the show was the fact that yeah. I was wondering because, like, it seemed logical with the Witch Queen. Like, we get a new destination, but it's also for their resources reusing the dreadnought seemed like a logical thing as well. Right. So I wondered honestly when that might be coming. And he said, we probably will never see Savathun because she's the trickster and she's going to find some way to be a proxy to mm -hmm. everything that we're doing. So she's never directly involved. And we know she's going to be involved now. And the fact that we actually have Zuvorath, her sister building up to this as well for over the course of probably all the seasons, Zuvorath is going to be somehow tied to these things of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. I, I mean the whole infinity war, everything coming together, I honestly wonder how which queen is going to handle everything that happens in there and then how it can escalate from Savathun, who, who we've been building to for right. so long. What do you do in Lightfall that makes it even bigger than the witch queen? That's, I guess, the question, right. unless we finally right. meet the veil. But I still yeah, don't. That, I was if like, anything, it should be yeah. that, right? Yeah. <laughs> but I was like, is that how they go into, is that when they finally just take the drop off the two or do a D3? Is that how they lead into that? Or is that when they ever build into what's next is like a new race? I hope. That this is the time where I wonder. It's like it at the end of year nine. Is this the point where they're like they're gonna hang up the bungee uh, or the destiny like robe on the wall and just leave it there, or is that where they're like cash cow's still going? We're gonna keep going. I guess we'll just have to see. But it's ooh. such a big and, and ever evolving game. It really doesn't seem like they have plans like stop supporting it. Yeah, no. right. Yeah. They 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 are making a new game, so like they're trying to branch out and do multiple things at once. Bungie. Mm -hmm. Yep. But like I, you, you can't give up. I don't think it, you can ever really give up on Destiny, especially now that they have their own creative control and they can do what they want with it. Mm -hmm. Um, it's they might. Who knows? They may do some spinoffs. It might be a, uh, a Destiny Warzone coming at some point. <laughs> Destiny Battle Royale. Who? Let's get who it. knows? Right. Hey, if the hardware uh, gets there, then it might be able to handle fifty supers at once. But until then, mm -hmm. yeah. And well, la last point I thought was interesting was I love when I looked at the roadmap. You know, we saw this uh, this Wrathborn hunts, and it looks like we're definitely going to take place on the Dreaming City, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, that I want to see if we get some payoff there because it was interesting to me that uh, the Dreaming City wasn't removed from obviously the, into the content vault. It's still going to be a part of uh, of the expansion. So, I want to see what they do there. All, obviously, we got the Aldrin, we got the Marasov things, we got the Cursed, we got a lot of things that got to get paid off, yep. and I want to see how they use that space from Beyond Light going forward. So, that, that's mm -hmm. where I'm at with it too. But yeah. Got a roadmap, you know, the hype train's going, man. And it goes till February, which I guess answers, like, you know, what How long? normally they launch that other uh, season in yes. uh, December. Yeah. Now it's going to launch in February, which, mm -hmm. like, so what is it? The other one usually launches in March. So mm -hmm. if they're pushing that back, probably be early February. Mm -hmm. March, like, maybe we have a launch in, like, April May. or May instead yeah. of June. Yeah, yeah. But then you got to fit one more in still. So maybe mm. end of April, just and then you have one in like August or July. Yeah, I was like, do they start shortening like the post Beyond Light seasons? Are those a little more condensed to get back to their right. cycle? If, if they're trying to do it again, I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Like, yeah, will the the 
to be condensed and so we have the normal like june launch for the normal summer shenanigans or instead of a june like a later june or even an mm-hmm. august launch and they're all a little bit shorter which right. honestly would be better it would just yeah. be more packed with content right mm-hmm. yep uh, i just wonder so, what that's going to do them on like their dev cycle too it's like they're looking to build towards witch queen which is when we're looking at things like crossplay and all that stuff coming up and like if they try and condense that window from like november to get back to september it seems tight for them as you know yeah, development's not yeah. easy anymore no but the you know the seasons are usually a bit lighter no oh, yeah and it seems like now especially they may be i don't want to say even lighter but like you know right. with the season of the hunt seems you just have these public events and probably a few things mm-hmm. of loot and that's kind of it mm-hmm. so well, it's, and, a, it's a good question it's a good question right because yeah. at the end of the day that's where the delay you know, going in had to affect the development of the next following two annual, you know, passes or whatever. So, yeah, it's a good question. Does it get shorter? Does it get longer? I, w- I was speculating <laughs> that potentially they just get rid of one of the seasons and I, just have two more yep, condensed two. seasons. Yeah. Uh, now, that would kind of screw up a lot of the timing and mm-hmm. screw up the infusion caps, right? Because mm-hmm. it's like supposed to go a certain amount, but you get rid right. of one. How yeah. are you going to do that? It, that's the interesting part mm-hmm. or they just skip one and say you know season 13 14 and then which queen 16 and we're skipping right. 15 too bad you know i don't know it's gonna be it, i don't so it's i think most way, likely though. they're gonna condense them but yeah. it could be an interesting move the condensing mm-hmm. wouldn't be bad because there's plenty of times in any of the past year when it's like could we take some Nothing weeks out happening. of this yeah like get them out of here we don't need like the fourth iron banner i'm good <laughs> and then but then like or like this season this season when they when they have when they uh, have like three weeks of nothing and I then know. they have the halloween event go live and the interference mission finally complete on the same, the same day week. yeah and it's, like, why? And it's like i well the, the reason why is because obviously they have like you know certain update chunks and they do everything in one yeah. thing but it's like guys a hundred percent the interference mission should have come like two weeks yeah. earlier or whatever. Agreed. So everyone can get hyped about that. And then you Agreed. have the Halloween event as its own thing. Agreed. But yeah. And then we still have to allude to this, you know, I don't know. I don't want to call it like an almighty event, but some type of season ending event that got to transition into, a, you know, yeah. to what you call a, a rival. So and end the rivals into beyond light. So that's another thing. It, it's I feel for them because I know they didn't anticipate that delay. And now they have to kind of scramble and then still get things lined up. But yeah, there, there's still some payoffs that that need to happen. So I'm I'm curious to see how they handle that and then transition in. But we got a lot of twab, some stuff to get into, man. Get to an E. Yeah, I'm just trying to think. Is there anything else from the Vidoc that you guys like were hyped about? Anything that you guys saw? I like the audio stuff was cool. I was like, that's always yeah. stuff you don't think as much about. But when we're playing, I'm oh, always yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. if you take yeah, a second, pump. like, how does this Shout sound? Out to the or, pump. Yeah, breast pump, bo- raid boss. <laughs> Let's go, baby. Shout out to that. That was funny. No, it sounded no. cool though. It was just like, yeah. and they had yeah. that weird giant long like horn looking thing that she's like yeah. rolling a slinky on them. Like the way people come up with sounds like audio engineers are like really, really out of the box thinkers. We did get confirmation oh, yeah. of double buddy. So we got the yes. no time to Forgot explain. Yeah. You, you and mm-hmm. your warlock double arc buddy are going to have yeah, a little fun. Yeah, Get my getaway artists and my joy. You know what I'm saying? Get the gang at the gangs. The yeah. goons with me. <laughs> people who are solo players can't complain about not having a fire team now. Just make your own. <laughs> Just make it's your own right with two, the two buddies, yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably man. more useful than having I you know half the fire teams out there, honestly. All right. Oh, oh. Dis- the blueberry disrespect. <laughs> the blueberry disrespect. Hey, come on! I've hey, played certain strikes. And I'm like, corrupted oh strike. my god! The- and sadly, oh. the corrupted strike is still oh, going to be out. there. So yeah. yeah, I'm back out. I'm back out when I see that one. with blueberries. Dude, they don't know what they're doing. Oh no! I like but throw let- it directly at them and they hold it and then they're like, <laughs> and then they just like throw it into the into the distance and you're like, all right. So, Go ahead, so I'll just I, do it myself. It's fine. So let me let yeah. me ask let me ask Vint this because you know this is rare to eat. Got, I got two titans around me, so I gotta ask oh. the titans. How are we feeling about these exotics that you saw in the trail? Like, how are you? Are you hyped? Are the one you, that like, makes what? the overshield. Yes. Yeah, where you at? Oh, where the titans dude, at? Busted as crap, dude. What Literally the hell? Busted as- <laughs> dude, how, like literally, apparently, uh, like I think there's probably gonna be some sort of way to balance. Obviously, uh, the. the there was some speculation. I was saying originally, okay, so if it replaces your, if it replaces your class ability, mm-hmm. does having stuff that affects the cooldown of your class ability mm-hmm. then affect the cooldown of at that, Good or point. is it just like it recharges in twenty se- or thirty seconds or twenty seconds, mm-hmm. no matter what? And so your 
what is it for Titan? Resilience yes. wouldn't matter. Right. It, it's going to be very interesting, but like just for the fact that it's like, okay, just pop it, come around a corner, win that gunfight. Bro. Yeah. I mean, How the do you only thing is though, the crucible? Well, you can probably, you can hear it and you got a big animation. So if you hear it, yeah. move, like, get get right. it's like, move, don't go away. around that corner. Give them a It's minute. like when you hear a golden gun activate, I'm just going to like, see ya. I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm not, not. like, I'm way, not going to deal with this. Uh, but yeah, it seems cracked. Uh, there, a lot of the exotics seem really good. The one for the warlock that the ne- increases oh. burn damage. And I think it just said increase burn damage period, which like, okay, Remember when that happened? Viking Funeral in D1? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that, like, so grenades are going to be affected by that, too. And I think it mm-hmm. also said, like, if you kill an enemy with burn, mm-hmm. it, uh, it recharges faster or whatever. And again, yeah, that affects... Yeah, synergy, yeah. Or your melee recharges faster. Mm-hmm. But again, mm-hmm. like, that affects multiple things. Uh, you throw a solar grenade, sunspot grenade or whatever, that causes a burning effect. So that's also yes. going to affect it. And then mm-hmm. if you're on bottom tree... Sun's uh, uh, Dawn Blade, Blade. Mm-hmm. that's a pretty good PvE subclass. So now oh, that's yeah. doing more damage. More damage and continually because the more kills you get, it extends the... Exactly. Yeah, that's gonna be, I mean, that's, that's already little... seeing play. And yes. now you're, you're going to do more damage? Like, yes. that's interesting. I will yes. say, like, the... Uh... The poison grips, the necrotic grips or whatever. I knew that's exactly what that was. Like, you get a group of low-level adds. You punch one, and just as they die, it's just going to trickle and chain that damage to everybody. That impressed yeah, me way more than I thought. That's an interesting one. And then, of course, obviously giving Hunters Blink, which oh, is the God. worst idea ever. Like, <laughs> uh, You like, can't can complain, do, Titans. Y'all dude, can't complain. The Hunters need gonna, this. No, we're going to need our they, shield because they they're going to literally dodge hunters, next to us, yeah. slow us down, and we're going to have to take all those hunters shots because we can't move. don't need any more help, dude. Like... <laughs> If I see Sinister, one, don't unsubscribe to Cactus. If don't, I, I know, see I know he's talking one, slanderous. Continue. Wait, listen, if I see one more hunter, you it, in the crucible, all that happens, you you aim at a hunter, aim at them for two seconds, they just spam jump, and then <laughs> they convince them skill, themselves. They're like, "Wow, bro, I smashed that space bar. Such high skill uh, gap. I'm so skilled." It's like, no, dude, you're just a whip. <laughs> Slander. No, it, I know you're supposed to do that. I'm just a salty ass titan who just got to look up all the time. I'm like, yeah, there you go. All right. I respect nice. it though. I respect but, like, it. I, I'm, I'm just salty, honestly, because that looks extremely powerful. Yeah. Like, even Blink, you yes. have more of a, like, trail, mm-hmm. right? You blink here, and it kind of shows a little bit of a Shows you the warp. outline. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you can kind of track it better. This seemed like it was, like, literally, like, gone, and Boom. it appeared somewhere else. Facts. And that's going to be really hard to track. Yes. And so yes. even like just sideways in a gunfight, you're getting shot at, boom, now I'm over here. I keep shooting you and uh, that could be a really interesting one. Can't wait till that's disabled three days after the expansion comes <laughs> I'm out. also like you have one that's like be that for hunters and I guess that's how they balance it out because that one seems so good. And then you have the one that nobody can pronounce, Arthrus' Embracer, however you say that yeah, thing. Yeah, whatever. With the double bouncing throwing knife. I'm like, that is literally just a montage thing. I still do not see the purpose in that. No, but I guess oh, if- oh, 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 I'm going to interrupt. Okay. Let's get it. So- on the website, the description is bigger than what was on the trailer. Really? What do you say? So, so mm-hmm. this is why you got to watch my content. You know what I'm saying? No, <laughs> so, Rick Jackers, baby. Let's I'm go. Here, so, look at the rapid precision so hits. So, with, yeah. So, that's the thing that makes a rapid precision hits increase weapon damage. And it's like, wait a second. That is a huge deal. That's a huge like, deal. Because, like, rapid precision hits increase weapon damage and then just the the precision knife bouncing or the knife mm-hmm. bouncing is just like a little extra thrown on on top of it and that blows my mind because it's like okay if i'm using an auto rifle will mm-hmm. that maybe make it one shot less to kill or something mm-hmm. uh you know if i have a scout rifle will that make a four shot kill a three shot kill right probably not because that would be extremely really powerful beast. a fast firing auto rifle where it takes like 10 headshots to kill that maybe would be reduced but then it's mm-hmm. like okay in a PvE scenario, mm-hmm. like hold on, and also how, like, is it ascending like this, or is it just like one tier? So it's like, right. hey, you land five percent shots, ten percent more damage, flat right. plateau after that. Right. Uh, if it ramps, dude, Woo! Thunderlord is, is going to be the next meta for damage, or mm-hmm. you know, a fast firing sniper. Okay, so what if I'm using something like the Aikilo sniper? That's got like you know, you can shoot like what eleven rounds with that. Mm-hmm. So if that's ramping up in damage, oh, so th- yeah. just that ability is like peaks my yeah. interest like crazy. See, Very I misread so. that. I thought that was related to like somehow like rapid knife precision hips. I'm like, that doesn't no, even yeah. make sense. So that actually, that clarifies some because when yeah, I misread and, that, and, I was like, mm-hmm. 
I read that the first time, like that. E- that makes even less sense. But if it's just true yeah, exactly. weapon damage, that yeah. honestly could be. It just it says changing times to kill. Yes. Yeah, that, if that's that changes time to kill. Kills. Hits. Yeah, right. Dude, that yeah. Is, yeah, and that's the hits is why what makes it cracked out of his mind for PVE because that hey it affects boss damage. Oh yeah. I mean, if you're boss DPSing with the Whisper of the Worm, the Aikilo Sniper, Zeno. I mean, Xenophage doesn't really crit, but right. Any those things. You could put on a helmet that just makes you do flat more damage. And like, what are you using right now on a hunter? Maybe you do a Celestial Nighthawk, mm-hmm. but then you've kind of got to take time away from shooting to do that. So right. this could be like, this is one of the, potentially one of the most impactful new yeah. exotics, period. The, the key of, is it going to be a flat damage increase or is it going to be a, a multiplier where it, that times up? And it it keeps going up. Yeah. Could you, it could get crazy. Stack then, one, oh stack two, God. stack three, and just oh everybody plays my. hunter and like bosses die. Yeah. Like that'll be. Yeah. Literally, listen, that would be like complete, the Titans complaining. That would listen completely you warp the meta. Be scared. That would completely <laughs> warp the meta. You if add it, that it kept with like stacking. an oppressive darkness and a bubble buff. And well, that that's pers- going away, right? Probably, yeah. We know probably. we'll get something, but yeah, they probably won't bring it back at first, I would imagine. Mm-hmm. We do get but, yeah. We get oh the name God. of the new strike. Yo, you said air apparent gonna be meta. Yo, the chat stupid. <laughs> oh, I mean, if it stacks, I mean, I I feel like it's gonna be like after a certain amount. Like after four precision hits, you get like a ten percent damage increase, and it plateaus. It's maybe it's gotta be. It's even gotta. then, that could be a big deal. Yeah, yeah. We get one strike. Yay! <laughs> For now, <laughs> yeah. I was like, well, all I the know strikes taken like, away, but we got one new one. Let's or, go. We lost all seven, but over the course of the year, we should get four. This one, and then the three on Cosmodrome, right? Mm-hmm. Did you say, uh, right? Yeah, I think there's one more Europa one that's coming at some point or something like that. Oh, maybe. Maybe it's like, maybe it's going to be similar to the raid. I swear there was two on Europa, but mm. like, remember when we beat the raid, then I think. Oh, yeah. Which color unlocked? They yeah, yeah, unlocked yeah. the corrupted. Oh, so that'd I be think, cool. I think they may be doing something like with that because if it takes place in like a, like a similar kind of in the Deep Stone crypt. Because mm-hmm. like. Something I noticed is if you go on the website, it says Deep Stone Crypt. It literally doesn't even mention the rate. It's like Deep yeah. Stone Crypt. It's see? almost listed as a new area. I, I see, mean, I watched I watch the video, sir. Yeah. And I, yeah. <laughs> you actually were only one of the few to make a, a, a very good point that a lot, most people are just assuming Deep Stone Crypt is just this one area. And you made a good point. Like, this could be a very large area, right? And mm-hmm. that the raid is in, in this new area as opposed to just the Deep Stone Crypt being one singular thing. So continue, yeah. sir, because you had to make uh, sure Yeah, I, I don't think it's necessarily what is panning out to us. I don't think it's necessarily going to be a new, like, uh, you can travel to it because mm-hmm. they kind of would have said that mm-hmm. uh, in order to sell the expansion. But right. certainly just the way it's, like, really weirdly worded like yeah i'm looking back at some of the other you know dlcs and you know for uh scourge of the past they weren't mm-hmm. like new area first city they were right. like scourge of the past raid takes raid. place in the fir- in, in 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 this last city mm-hmm. they didn't list last city as just a new area you're going to but they did right. with deep stone crypt and so i think like it's very mm-hmm. possible that a strike takes place there Mm-hmm. Or potentially it's something like Leviathan where mm-hmm. you go in and do the raid, but mm-hmm. then there's like potentially some more places you can go, some chests you can find secrets like cool. Leviathan. I'd like to it's see got that. the whole it's got mm-hmm. the whole under underbelly area, right? And you mm-hmm. can go and get loot there like pretty unrelated to the raid, e- even though it's not like a fully travelable, right. you know, destination, right? right? So I think it could be similar to that, honestly. That would be cool. I'd actually that would probably be the best thing I could see because it does seem like the, I mean the raid is deep stone crypt, but seeing more explorable because so many people have questions about that destination and like if you could explore and find little lore bits or anything like that would actually be really cool for that area that a lot of people are looking forward to understanding mm-hmm. more about an entire race like this is mm-hmm. where we're actually finally getting to get to see stuff about the exos and that's actually the first tell. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Clovis, you, I, I caught that Clovis Bray lore stuff, right? That's been dropping. Mm-hmm. And the um, yeah, and the, I got um, my lunchbox I, over there. What are you talking about? Yeah, that's right. I, I forgot, y'all. Yeah, you know, I'm not privy to such information. Hey, <laughs> you could have pre-ordered it I'm just like me. You. That's your choice. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm living through you, sir. <laughs> it's There's a whole yeah, book man, in there that would take like an hour to read. So you got yeah, that Clovis Bray do. stuff is deep, man. Your man is he's, he's wow. Your boy is wow, man. He's <laughs> pushing those um experiments to the limit, man. But we will get into it. Yeah, I was listening got, to Milan talk about that. That man is a little crazy. Um, yeah, yeah. Crovis is crazy. Yeah. Hey, little. it worked. We got Exos. <laughs> <laughs> Something worked. All yeah, I yeah, can yeah, say is yeah. I want I want the exo, I want the Stranger's Fish thingy, whatever it is, 
Yeah. And yeah. whatever ship lands with those like interstellar robot rotating sections, like the ones that look like it's ro- the, the red. Tar- the TARS guy Tars, from Interstellar. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I want that ship because if that's her ship, she's got the best looking loot in the entire game. Like hands down. So. Be, yeah. I, I, that is that Phil Fish thingy was quite interesting of like, maybe that's just like an exo pet. I feel like looking back at it, but well, maybe they that's said at one that's... point, right? They, weren't they like asking Luke and be like, well, it's not a ghost. He's like, and you won't be able to get it for a while or something like that. He said, it's, I think it's like there at some point we'll get like pets in destiny. Okay. I really do. And then, and they'll, they'll kind of like trail along or like, like mm-hmm. a ghost. You only see when you take it out. Right. right. So uh, it's just like a nice piece of customization, mm-hmm. you know? More content in Eververse, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Get that, Speaking get that of Eververse, <laughs> if you may as well in jump fairness, in. They're, the... get, they're getting more generous now with the bright yes, dust. Yeah, we're going to get it too. Yeah. Kind of, for some, for the average person, they will definitely probably see more. For the hardcore grinders, it's likely they'll actually see a little bit less. So you kind of mm-hmm. got both sides, depending on the person playing. But mm-hmm. yeah, the season pass is, sadly for me, even I said this a while ago, I was like, can the season pass get like a bit of an update, a change? Nope. <laughs> Not really. Yeah. We're just getting basically more bright dust thrown in there and everything else is probably going to look pretty similar. Now, the season pass is going to go from, what, 2,500 to 10,500 bright dust, which is a good thing for, like, you know, casual person logs in. They just want to play some strikes. They do their normal stuff. They don't do their weekly bounties. They're going to get a crap load more. But yeah. then you have the people who have three characters go do every weekly bounty and they want to farm for bright dust. And this is like, this is the game I play. They're definitely getting, like, what I somebody did the math, it was like almost 30% less bright dust that you can earn in a season, potentially the way the weeklies have been lowered. Just kind of curious if you guys cared about this one, good, bad, or otherwise. I don't really do that hardcore weeklies. Like, I'm not gonna be, I'm not fine to play Gambit every week. Like, come on, dude, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> like, the bright dust just ain't worth it for me. So, I, I think, yeah, for the vast majority of players, it's an increase. And if you're like going super, super hardcore, mm-hmm. I guess it's a dig, but it's it, the weekly bounties go from 200 down to 100, right? So you still can grind them. And also, you've got to factor in that they seem to be, every time there's like, um, you know, uh, an event that offers a lot of bright dust, right? And so we know the dawning is coming too, so you'll be potentially be able to make up some right. bright dust that you maybe would have, like, lost uh, if you're, like, a super hardcore bounty farmer. Right. Yeah, I was like, it's a, probably a short group of people. I guess my only thing was for them, for the person who's like, I'm going to play your game and I'm going to be living in there. They probably have one or two other people they may do that with as well. And it's just right. like, it would be nice for them to reward those people. And they say they're going to work on stuff in season 13, so we'll have to see what it the changes are. Let them have more than 10 ascended shards then. And not <laughs> get <laughs> there's, there's a lot of like, changes if you want to go down that rabbit hole. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh, there's, I, there's, I agree with that. Like, Bungie seems to not like. We can't let players get too far ahead. We can't yes. let we can't let our dedicated players be too like have too much stuff. Because then, mm. oh no, they'll be able to mass work all the new exotics. And it's like, and and <laughs> like, yeah, uh, like okay, the the guy's mm-hmm. like plays like four thousand hours. Like he's gonna beat you in the crucible, whether or not his new exotic is mass work. So just mm. like let's let players get lost in the world and lost in the game and. Mm-hmm. and and get some benefits again like the most of it is pretty minor benefits the difference between if i have a if i'm in the crucible and i have a, a one-eyed mask and you have a one-eyed mask and mine's masked worked i get a, some very slight advantages right, right. Yep. so it, there are advantages but there are advantages. i they need to stop like i th- really think they need to and 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 with adept weapons they seem to mm. be moving in a more Let's let the hardcore players be right. hardcore. Because yep. right. those adept weapons look freaking sweet. Mm-hmm. And yeah. just, yeah, those plus three to all those other stats, like the that's stats, the perfect yeah. example of like, it is technically a tiny bit better. Some right. players don't want that. Like I, there is actually, I, you know, obviously talked about how there should be adept weapons back. Yeah, of But course. a lot of players like didn't want that. They're like, no, you good players just want to dump on us casuals even more. And it's like, dude. That's not the plus point. Plus three, <laughs> plus three yeah. stability is really almost not going to make the difference in any gunfight yeah. like it you know it's but it's, it's a carrot but, but, but it's that carrot yeah. at the end of the stick that trials needs exactly right. and i don't think casual players realize that like yeah. yes this is a piece of loot dedicated for the hardcores but it right. will help them because then all the hardcores are chasing adept right. weapons and guess what you have adept weapons Mm-hmm. nobody and i mean right. nobody hardcore is farming tokens at one to three wins anymore nope. because right. they're going for those adept they're weapons now 
every mm-hmm. time, dude. There's no way you can tell me you can get an adept shotgun mm-hmm. or, oh, you can go and get tokens. Like, so that means like the beginning wins are going to be f- for, for the most part free open. of hardcore players. Yeah, yeah. they're going to be near the top. So it just got easier for most players to go in and get some tokens and be more casual in trials and get some loot there. No, I agree. I agree. And at the end of the day, like I've always said, you know, it's an end game activity, right? You know, at the end of the day, we just can't be just giving out everything to everyone because like I always say, Vanilla D2 suffered from that. And it really bothered me that people were getting raid weapons and all this other stuff. Like at the end of the day, this is an end game content. If you're not good enough, that's fine. We still got comp for you. We still got all these other things for you, or you can aspire to be better. So I'm not trying to be bougie, but at the end of the day, it's like we have to reward the hardcore and give them incentive yeah. to want to chase. Uh, like that absolutely. to me helps the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like, I mean, it's, same thing with the raids. They're getting the tease of that, and that's kind of hopefully they kind of handle the raid mm-hmm. socket and stuff correctly, and there's a but, little bit of that stuff coming in as well. But right. overall, yeah, the, it's just the, the in-game stuff, like, I can go out and get a piece of armor that's the exact same as a raid piece of armor. It's like, why am I going to go get that? Exactly. Uh, well, that was Destiny 1, right? Like, the, the armor just looked different. That was it. And it didn't work. The game, like, right. completely collapsed on itself. Because, mm-hmm. like, people... The casual players, a lot of the time, like, don't realize some of the finer aspects of the game and game development. They just mm-hmm. are in, they want the cool loot, mm-hmm. and then they dip, right? Right. But it, once you do, you know... Even if you're a casual, well, even if you're a casual player, mm-hmm. get some time off. You spend a few solid days playing the game. You really start to grind up. You can even mm-hmm. start to really feel those end game pressures. Like, or you luck out and on a streamer carries you through a raid, and you got some raid loot, and you finally ascend. Like something that I think it's a lot. Of, it's very hard for people to realize is like you need aspirational content. Even if you're not beating the raid, even if you're not beating trials. You need just the knowledge that it's there because that's what you're working towards. I, and it's, again, you're not really going to notice it too often, but I noticed it recently in Borderlands 3 because in Borderlands 3, they changed a bunch of stuff. I was playing it recently, having fun, but it got to the point where I was max level and had some decent loot. And I was just like, had that sudden realization of what next? And there was nothing. It, like all of the takedowns are a joke and they're not even close to a raid. There's no raid bosses in Borderlands 3 like there are in Borderlands 2. You had nothing to work towards and I've, I literally just stopped playing after that. Like it wasn't like I, I was like mad and I logged off. I just logged off and I never got back on because I was like, I, I'm basically done. Like I beat the game. There's nothing for me to go for. So as soon as you remove those hardcore activities, casual players, even if they're not doing it, they'll they'll stop playing too because there's no more like why are you getting loot why are you getting god rolls if not to eventually maybe try trials right like right. why else would you want that pvp god roll you're muted by you're the muted, way lord <laughs> preach <laughs> that's why i was literally so angry with vanilla d2 because again everybody got everything and then like you said once the casuals get everything they're out yeah. And that, yeah. that majority of the base then goes away. So without the aspiration, out to the cars go by. So without the aspirational content, you know what I'm saying? Like there's there's no incentive. And and the thing that people don't realize, like I, I got T E, you know, I told you this story all the time, is I'll never forget in D1. I didn't know what trials was, right? And then going into the tower and seeing some God the Guardian with all this Egyptian gear, I was like, what the hell is that? And I'm yeah, you're like, them. yo. And I'm like, yo, what's doctrine of passing? And oh, yo, I got it. And I sucked at PvP, but it made me get in there every week, whether it be just doing those little grind bounties and so on and so forth. That's the thing you need. And and people like Kaka, you, you on fire make, with that. Because that's yeah. what people have to realize has to be the game. Continue. And well, it's also you're 100 percent right, but it's also designed with those baby steps. Like I'm sure mm-hmm. you did some of the bounties and got you didn't get the adept messenger, but maybe yep. you got the normal messenger. I got a regular, right? I got a regular yep. doctor to pass it, and then I was like, "Yo, I, I, I'm got, I gotta like, get next level. I gotta level yeah, up." Yeah, and yeah, yeah, and it's and it's slapped though. You can still gain benefits from that loot, but then you're like, "Okay, what if I get an adept?" You know what I'm saying? Like, ooh, yeah. and, so and, and it's just that about. little like you have you need something to play for. You can't yes. have all this stuff to perfect your build. And then nothing to use your perfected build on. Yep. Yes. Preach. Preach well, that's even why, that. like, I mean, it's nice to see, like, dungeons having solo, like, incentives and kind of built around that because those you do mm-hmm. kind of need to spec out for to survive to a point. But also, like, I still even miss, like, hard mode raids because that was that, like, 
You'd go through, you'd like King's Fall was still one of my favorites for yeah. the reason of it was built hard. They took mm-hmm. it down to normal. It down. And then as you learn the encounters, you got some gear out of there, you got some more. And that's where it's like they the gear, hopefully, I'm hoping maybe in Deep Stone mm-hmm. Crypt has some benefits to the raid itself. And it needs to. Like if I get gear from the Deep Stone Crypt, hopefully it has some benefits to there outside of those mods that we're gonna get to see. So no, the carrot yeah. needs to be there for all of these end game pieces so people have a reason to continue. Otherwise, especially now as you can sit in a strike playlist and get to 1250, they need to have a reason to go get other stuff that's better than just a number. And that's right. what. Yep. Yeah. And that was the biggest thing mm-hmm. with Avengers is there was nothing to do after you got like you got your <laughs> skills, like you got your skills, which is like a fun way to play. It was mm-hmm. just changing a number and nothing changed. And I was like, that's what sucks. So. No doubt. Mm-mm. And like, I, that's part of the, it's crazy. Like part of the reason Destiny is so successful is because they're not listening to a huge amount of players and, who are like, put in matchmaking for raids, like do all this <laughs> stuff. And Bungie's like, nope. And and, 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 and yeah, they don't like it, but mm-hmm. like psychologically, even if they don't realize it, like they have that light at the end of the tunnel, they have something to always aspire towards. Right. And it's just so important. Cause yeah, like you said, with Avengers, with, anthem with borderlands mm-hmm. you all these games you level up level up level up and then you yep. kind of like what's next exactly exactly and you're like, i have my build yep I, what yeah exactly <laughs> yeah preach it brother preach it you know fine but yeah you got like, these twabs sir i was like well we're touching through pieces of it i mean we mm-hmm. know the level cap's going to be basically as we expected the infusion's going up 200 on everything so that's not new uh, but the nice thing is they did do the powerful reward changes. So now you can go sit in strikes, gambit, crucible, seasonal drops, which will be whatever seasonal hunt's going to be. Yep. You'll have a chance from those to get powerful rewards. Now they say it's still more efficient to go through the powerful challenge checklist and do them all. But if you're like, I'm out and you have like a one player character, especially is like, I've got one character. I did all my challenges. What do I do this week? Now you can go sit in those activities if you want to and yeah. still keep leveling up. So there's incentive to continue to play the game which is going to help, especially that one person who's working through it. What's up? The key is going to be the frequency of those. Correct. Players. Yeah, that's the big yeah. one. Is it like mm-hmm. one every 10 strikes? Oh, hell no. It's like like one right. every couple or a few or something. Then we might right. be talking, but mm-hmm. it all depends, as you said, the frequency. Because if like I've done 10 strikes and I got nothing, this is not worth it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a whole different story entirely. Mm-hmm. Um, Tokens. Yeah, I mean, tokens, collections, those are pretty much being nerfed into the ground. Collections, too, like, I was even thinking about exotics. Like, they're going to be capped at 1050. Everything's going to be 1050, first off. Like, every piece of gear that you own. But, like, even exotics from collections, like, oh, you know, it's like, hey, I want to go through, toy around with this exotic. It's only, like, 20 below where I'm... Nope. Even your old exotics that you, like, pulled out to use, you're going to have to infuse them all to go use them towards the end, because they're not going to be nearly as close, which is a little annoying. I don't know why that stuff's quite as low, but yeah, the, I, I, I already know I what they're doing with that. Go ahead. I don't see why you can't, the the withdrawing stuff in the collections can't also be 20 below. Right. I, I yeah. feel like it's like problem solved and it, it makes it more fun. Like, mm-hmm. oh, uh, you know, I'll do it a lot where it's like, hey, it's um, arc burn, whatever. I'm just going to get the risk runner. Now I'm not. Like, screw right. that. Like, I'm not going to have to infuse it up. Like, it's ridiculous. <laughs> exactly. So I think that was a mistake honestly it's gonna mm. the vendor thing is a big change like that's huge yep. i mean you, i used to just stand at zavala and be like oh, all right just, now i hit this off cap yep they stopped that that's what that was yeah. <laughs> yeah. so oh, yeah. so now you're gonna have to like farm your ass off doing you know public events mm. you know a few other activities i need to test playing out playing the game sir playing the yeah, game yeah <laughs> I mean, yeah well okay the other side is I, those, I, like i don't have as many as probably some of you guys do but it's like i've got five thousand crucible tokens for example what am I going to use those on now? Now nothing, dude. Ba- shards. Like basically nothing. Yeah, shards. Really? Shards, like, you can take the spider. Oh, they God, said don't even, they, we're getting there. Don't worry. Hold, put a pin they in that. Said, <laughs> they said that they are re- do, they're doing a vendor refresh for armor, but they kind of never yeah. said weapons. So right. I, they're probably adding maybe a few more Crucible and, and Vanguard weapons. But other than that, like it's going to be... More anonymous autumns, I guess. <sighs> How many more reissues are we? Anonymous autumn. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, no, he, he, he oh, like, hit it with the auto. Oh yeah, no, I've had way too many of those as well. But yeah, it's like as Thanks. you said, the whole. I will say when they switched over to the world loot pool, that is not what the world loot pool is in my head because when they're like, mm-hmm. "Hey, all the vendors have these thirty different weapons," I'm like, "You just took the identity out of crucible weapons from Shax yeah. and Vanguard weapons from there yeah, and Gambit weapons." Like, like, why is why is Zavala dropping uh, Last Hope? Right. <laughs> Like, yeah. what's the point of that? That that was a weird change, and I don't know why. They really and need to 
do a vendor refresh. For yeah, oh, yeah. Please, please. yeah, I miss those, man. It, it, it added an excitement, like you said. It added an excitement and added an individuality to each vendor and a purpose. And I miss that from D1. And, and I don't know, I, I don't know if it, I, the vibe I'm getting like it's a resource thing, man. Like they just they got all these bucket listings of what they want to do. And wow. I know we, we'll touch the Luke Smith thing, but didn't they say um from a from a resource standpoint they're almost less than half than when they had. I mean, how about half the when yeah. they had Activision they, they can't with do what Vicarious they did. and High Moon. Yeah. 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 They can't do what they did with Forza. And that was, yeah, you said the Luke Smith one. He mm-hmm. had that Twitch gaming podcast interview and it's just, he basically stated, it's like, we're probably never going to make something as big as Forsaken yeah, again. Said it. Mm-hmm. And that's like, that's an eye opener to some people saying, hey, is this Forsaken? Is there a secret third in Celidus Destination or whatever? Mm-hmm. We're getting Cosmodrome and we're getting Europa. Europa is going to be big. And this is going to be bigger than Shadowkeep, which is exciting because... We're getting Europa, which has been developed for like 12,000 years. Um, it's been in development forever. And we also get to bring back Cosmodrome, which is kind of a, you know, nice skin paint. And then they're going to kind of build that one up as well. Mm-hmm. But that does kind of tell you what their resources are like. Can they do things like a Dreaming City and a Tangled Shore plus the strikes and everything we got with that? The the good news is that mo- they can bring destinations and content back more resource efficiently. And that's right. why th- we're getting the remade Vault of Glass, you know, in a few seasons, right? Because, you know, it's not it's not the same resources as completely redesigning a raid. Right. And so you have a lot of content from Destiny 1 to draw from. And then hopefully, right. because the vast majority of people were not here for Destiny 1, so to them it's totally new content. Yep. And the right. Destiny 1 vets are more than happy to get, you know, a D2 Fatebringer. Yes, you sir. can hopefully just get a lot of resources from that. Maybe they expand the team. Maybe they open a new op- a bungee office somewhere or something like mm-hmm. that. Like, um, and, and, and then maybe you do work your way towards having the resources to do Forsaken. I mean, Destiny is one of the biggest franchises out there. And it's just like, it's remarkably consistent. Like, it'll obviously drop off when it, it kind of dies, but just people keep coming back. People keep spending money. Mm-hmm. So they certainly... Again, that's the good news is that they can have a lot of content to draw from and even existing content. They bring back Titan at some point in yep. six years from now or whatever. It's and it's going to people are going to be thrilled about it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, this is like I said, you just want to see them continue to improve, evolve. There's a lot of stuff going on with them. I will say shout out to the new faces on the stream that I never saw before. So they look like they're hiring. <laughs> I saw some new people. I was like, oh, I ain't never seen this brother before. What's going on? You know, I see a lot of cool, cool faces, but um. You just hope that that continues to ramp up. And, you know, we got to be realistic with certain expectations based on studio size. So it is what it is. Yeah. I mean, we've joked about it before to say, it's like, how much are we expecting to get from, you know, Beyond Light? We kind of figured Shadowkeep was like a buffer. They were trying to figure out they were getting on their own. They had a whole lot of stuff going on. And then they are taking Europa. And this is where it's going to be kind of interesting to see how big is Europa? Because they probably had built the framework for Europa about six years ago. Right. So they had something to work with, but I mean, granted, they probably built it mostly from the ground up. Then they're mm-hmm. going to turn around and do a brand new destination for Witch Queen because they've said right. each expansion has a new one. It's like one. that's where it's going to see, like, what scale do they have in their pipeline again for how much bandwidth do they have to build another new destination and another new destination within right. when we talked about the cadence of the seasons. Are they going to mm-hmm. try and shrink it and get back to that September gap? Because if Beyond Light would have come out in September, we would have been all loving this thing because November 10th is stupid, busy, full yeah. of everything. Oh, oh my gosh, yeah. Like this well, week. Well, not Cyberpunk anymore. Hey, I'm happy about that one. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Like, yeah. See ya. <laughs> See ya, Cyberpunk. Content creators Idiots. was bad happy. <laughs> Cyberpunk, you know what Cyberpunk doesn't want to say? They scurred, dude. They're like, they saw. Oh, <laughs> they scared. They saw that Destiny? So, they yeah. like, nah, they want the they saw, Cyberpunk, the Cyberpunk devs saw that, like, Revenant gameplay and they're like, oh my god, dude. Like, <laughs> We're out of here, boys. They saw that game actually that was a lot of fun. But yeah. the world's See, in first, December, they, what, they smoke? Hey, they, <laughs> honestly, from uh, what honestly, I hear, that game probably needs to go to like April. But I mean, <laughs> it won't. Hey, you think that game's development is bad? Oh, the Halo, Halo Infinite. Oh, oh, oh my. Bad. Dude, the yeah. guy, that's the best That's the best storyline. Is like the, the, the main guy leaves. Leaves. Then yep. they like pay who knows how much to bring him back. Mm-hmm. And now he left again. <laughs> and it's like... <laughs> Dude, he, yes, he was like, I'm done, bro. Twice in like, a row, he's like, peace. I think this the ambition crazy. of that turning into like an open world style is probably biting them into just like scope creep or whatever you want to call it. Just like it's they're mm-hmm. trying to do a Let's lot. Let's just call uh, it what it is. It's it bad. needs to be a 2022. It's some mismanaged bad studio. It's just, it's just what it is. And I'm an Xbox guy, but I got to call it how I see it, bro. 
Like it's just it's mismanagement at the top. And when once you have this much turnover and and stuff like that, now they brought Staten in. And he's taking Chris Lee speech. Like, it, it's crazy. I mean, that's, it's, they brought I mean, a narrative lead in like three months before the game was supposed to launch. And you're going, you're starting over is what it sounds like. Yeah. 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 L- literally, it's, it was a politely, I'm taking your job. The dude that who show whoever showcase whatever they showcase in April with the Craig memes Craig's and the faces, out. Oh, <laughs> he's out of here. Oh, poor guys. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So you you guys that's responsible for Craig, we got a we got a new team in place, yeah. and it's the new direction we go away for. Which you know it makes you thankful of Bungie. Like they have a clear direction they're going in, like very yeah. clear. And and I think mm. that so much so that they felt safe enough to announce. Not only Beyond Light, but Witch Queen and Lightfall. Like, that's pretty unprecedented, right? Yeah, that's that never, robot. like, at no point, you know, Destiny 1 came out, and then we had the Taken King, mm. originally Comet. Comet. That's, uh, that's, that's a reference. That's an OG reference. Oh, yeah. Hey. Dead OG. Hey, hey, we got, that, we got alpha D- beta players in here. What's up? Hey, Woo! that D1 alpha vet Twitter account got nothing on me. Uh, <laughs> but, listen, uh, they had that. But, like, yeah. w- could you imagine when... That came out. They were like, "Hey, Rise of Iron next." I guess Rise of Iron, like they're working on Destiny Two. Yeah, right. they couldn't make it in time, and they made Rise right. of Iron. But even then, it's Destiny Two, Forsaken, and Forsaken. We have absolutely no idea about Shadow Keep. So this is like really unprecedented that yeah. they're like, "Here are the next three big expansions." Like we have a clear, mm-hmm. vision. overarching storyline that will connect mm-hmm. everything to this Lightfall. Yes. It's really interesting. They're doing that. It but like, again, I, it's good news because it's like they have a vision. And vision. like you guys said, yeah. with, with with Halo, they clearly have, are all over the map. Yeah. Mm. But I, I, last point, I'm going to move on from, from 343. I do feel for them because I always say this. 343, it's not their baby, right? It's like they're a, a foster parent in a way. Like they didn't create Halo. It was Bungie mm. that left and then they were forced to now live up to this expectation yeah. to, to do. No. So I do feel that. I'm not making excuses. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying like, I do feel that if, I wonder how they would do if they had their own franchise that was built by them, new yeah. ground up kind of thing, it, you know? It's, I w- I'll just say quickly, like, y- I'll make excuses. It, they have like an impossible job, like yeah. where it's, they have to be extremely loyal to the franchise, to Halo, or Halo Preach. vets will be like, this isn't Halo, this is trash, right? <laughs> and yet they need to be innovative enough so that they're not like, you're just copying Halo. This is a yep. feels like the same as all these other they, games. They, like, mm-hmm. they, yeah, they, like, they have win. to do both at the yeah. same time. It's really yeah, difficult to do. Tough spot, tough spot. I definitely agree. I mean, definitely. like something like Halo 2 and Halo 3 did do that, where it was still mm-hmm. unmistakably Halo, but it added enough new things that it was also completely innovative. It's very, very hard to do that. Destiny 2 went freaking backwards from Destiny 1. And then now, finally, we're forwards again. I think, like, with Beyond Light, like, if if we just got rid of everything in the middle and it was, like, Destiny (laughs) 1... To Beyond Light, where Light, we have yeah, all this, yeah, we have new new darkness subclasses, and we're continuing this way. I think that storyline would make like that would make sense. But mm-hmm. we kind of spend what four years, kind of yeah, getting, getting stuff back. back well, it's like they're they're honestly basically with the Destiny Content Vault, they're almost taking the Red War campaign and saying eh, it didn't kind of happen mm-hmm. because almost, like, yeah, like you, you're going to feel, Forsaken like straight in now. <laughs> doesn't yeah. it feel almost like they're kind of like. They, like they're finally getting on track, like with Beyond Light, and and again they announced that trio. Yep. It feels like it's like almost restarting. Like yeah. now we're exploring yeah. Yeah, it's this like a darkness. Reboot. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this is the... like this is mm-hmm. Destiny. This isn't even Destiny Two anymore. We have yeah. the Stranger back. It's kind of like agree. gone full, cir- full circle. circle. I well, completely let's just have, agree. Hope their Episode Seven is better than Star Wars Episode Seven, and we'll Yo. all be pretty good. Hey, <laughs> no, it can't possibly be worse. Actually, yeah. Well, Game of Thrones season eight has a oh, word. Oh, Game of Thrones season eight. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, oh, that's facts. a bad one. Season facts. that's a bad season eight. No, I will say though, is we got to we see this new arc coming of trilo- the next trilogy, as they called it somewhere in one of these fourteen mm-hmm. videos we've had. The forty three. Okay, forty three. Sorry, I miscounted. Um, the darkness subclasses is yes, yes. The plurality now, of that. <laughs> Your boy, again, caught that before Paul Tassi did the article. I caught it right away. I noticed we went over. I was like, yeah. He's a Tassi for more I caught that. Hey, Paul Tassi, come on, bro. (laughs) Get out of here. Shout out to Tassi. Continue. He 
uh, it was <laughs> like just barely an inventory screen. I just noticed it said darkness subclass sys. Plural. Now it could be a spelling mistake. It could just be like that. Uh, Maybe, that, but just the the way the UI was set up, right? Oh, it's Where too much. Yeah. You have, you know, right now you have it was like Gunslinger, and then you have the two little modules on the side for yep. Arc and Void. Mm-hmm. And, we, and I think we all thought there'd just be another module. Mm-hmm. So now mm-hmm. it's darkness. Now we and, switch. And then you're good, right? You just have the the three little great circles, and you just click st- darkness or uh, stasis, and you click whatever the other two are, right? But it's now it's a totally different knob that says switch to darkness subclasses and it completely switches. And then when you hover over, because he kind of barely went back over and you can see it say switch to light subclasses Mm -hmm. and also in plural again, because obviously we have multiple light subclasses. So that to me says like, dude, and and then Luke Smith comes in and says stasis is Oh, what do you say? It might even have like written, the first oh, have or written. something like that. He basically stasis, commented on it. He literally said he's like stasis is our introduction to the darkness subclasses. Yep. Mm-hmm. He like caught like again and it's Rural. all and like it, there's no way after like seven different quotes and like you know it's all just mistakenly plural. Like mm-hmm. they know what they're doing. Um, and I think that again the way the UI is designed, I think. Mm-hmm that it's very possible that we get a more darkness subclasses and there's three light subclasses, there's three light elements mm-hmm. and they've announced those three expansions all having to do with the darkness. Mm-hmm. So could it be like with witch queen, we get like poison and exactly. then with Lightfall we get like v- the veil powers or something Shadow like that. Shadow is kind of what I was thinking there. Yeah. Like almost whatever like whatever the yep. taken have bro, whatever I want those powers. If I can make my, <laughs> well, my we'll take a taken yeah. knight or a taken captain, I'm done. I just need the shoot black fire, ball of shoot. doom. Shoot invincible fire that kills you in <laughs> 0.1 seconds, and then also make your allies completely invincible to damage, like yes. the Vex oh, assholes. Oh, the goblins. Oh, goblins. Yeah, just bro, Dude, the goblins. Most, literally most. Oh, and then you can clone yourself, like the yeah. freaking scions, and then I'm just run around. With me just, now. What are you gonna do? Yeah. Dude, I mean, that's the most OP subclass for sure. If you're being taken. Absolutely. <laughs> well, maybe that's Rags. what we get from Savathun. I'm still, I still think the hive has to be green. That's why I'm with poison. you on the poison. I think, exactly. I think that's yeah, what that has I to agree. be. And, and just have like different things around. Because there's definitely is like a well, very they, clear like poison. Like Thorn, Thorn does it. The necrotic yep. grip. Yep. We're it's seeing a, it's a, a, a theme yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I agree. But I yeah, agree. then Lightfall. Well, and then the question is, that's the key is like, okay, so if we have six subclasses somewhere around Lightfall's end. How, where, yeah. Like, how do they take that into what's next? Is that like right, built? Here, shout here. out to the balance team. You oh my god, wanna... <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be a hard task. Good shout luck. out to them. Twelve hundred grenades cr- later. Good, you guys okay. want a crazy theory? Do it. So mm-hmm. it, and you can clip this and then uh, clip years it. We got now, it. If I'm right, listen. All right, here's a crazy theory. Light yeah. fall comes and we lose our light subclasses. They literally take all the light subclasses away and it's just the three darkness subclasses that you can choose between and then the next trio is like us because we we basically lose and we essentially uh, you could even say join the darkness with light fall the light Mm -hmm. like it would imply that light loses Mm -hmm. that battle Mm -hmm. then over the next course of whatever Bungie kind of reintroduces the light subclasses but Mm -hmm. they're remade somewhat they have some new abilities Mm -hmm. and they're importantly redesigned after the uh, mm-hmm. darkness Aspects subclasses and fragments and all that ex- exactly because right now like you have two very different types of subclasses mm-hmm. like the, yeah. the just, just normal no like attunements and then the a lot more de- in-depth customization and i think mm-hmm. obviously people would rather have that customization going mm-hmm. forward with the light subclasses so that's a great excuse for them to like take them away and then reintroduce them remade mm-hmm. oh no listen you might be on to something. Sir. I was like, yeah, we've <laughs> kind of joked about some of that before. The other idea was like, if we mm-hmm. get darkness in this one, at, are they over the course of seasons or time going to like rehash the other ones? Like is next season right. potentially going to be like, hey, this is an arc based one. Your arc one gets the aspects and fragments. And then so right. I kind of wondered if they would do it that quickly. But mm-hmm. honestly, like yours would be more theoretically would make more sense in lore aspect because mm-hmm. you would actually have a reason to lose them and the way to bring them back in that different way. Because right now it'd be kind of arbitrary to be like, Okay, the arc now functions yeah. like this. Like, I really like how that. Oh, oh! I made a big mistake telling that whole theory without my tinfoil hat oh, on. No. Like, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't. It doesn't count now. You didn't have the hat on. It doesn't count. Yeah. Uh, I literally had it sitting behind me. What was I thinking? 
<laughs> Salute to the tip, all. You come already on. know. Hey, Listen, man. I, I think you're onto it, bro. Because at the end of the day, it's like, oh, shout out, Scarrow. What's going on? What's going on, chill guy? Hey, cool, cool guy. Um, yeah, in the chat. But yeah, it's like, I, I do think, because at the end of the day, we're going to have the Stasis subclass. We're going to have these new dark this subclasses. The other stuff, I'm not going to say it's going to be obsolete, but it's going to need to be reworked, right? So what better way oh, yeah. to do what you said, right? Where they either remove and it's light fall, and then there's a periodic kind of progression of reintroducing things getting in a back new way to the light and yeah. getting back to the light and it makes sense thematically story yo that's fine I, you want to it. put the hat me you want to it bro yeah you want to it yeah. Yeah. Uh, like and it. they're definitely regardless of with if that exact trajectory happens mm -hmm. there has really got to be at some point them mm -hmm. remaking the current subclasses like this yes seems like subclasses 2.0 but yep. i think yes. they knew they would be taking off like they'd be way too much work to do that with to all of them because yeah you have so many so much loot because you have all these different aspects for like the existing subclasses so right. i think to reintroduce them like one at a time would certainly make a lot of sense yeah right however they Absolutely. do it over seasons or as you're saying in a much later state they mm -hmm. will eventually this is like they even called like subclasses kind mm -hmm. of like a beta state for this as they at mm -hmm. one point that was said as they're built into it i'm just mm -hmm. kind of curious as you take stuff like hammers for example for a titan and you've got sunbreaker mm -hmm. you've got the big burning mall you've got sunspots right. and you've got the throwing hammers like are those now going to be like the aspects to change the way the subclass works are we mm. just like going to whittle it down and change like yeah. are we going to be yeah. losing like i mean what is scarrow saying in chat he's like mm. no it wasn't scarrow somebody was just saying it's like bottom mm. tree it was cool guy bottom tree cool guy, dawn yeah. blade like if you lose one of your favorite subclasses like and they don't give yeah. you a way to get it back. There's definitely going to be but I, hell to pay to the community for I sure. I got a theory with that because it's like, I think what we're seeing now is the evolution of the subclass. Like what we're seeing now with the fragment and stuff. And mm -hmm. they, they want to, in my opinion, they want to get back to some semblance of choice and, and, and configuration. Okay, okay. Absolutely. No, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And if you look at how it's formatted, you just pick... It's like you have your like melee slot, your jump yes. slot, and you hover over it and it just comes down. So hypothetically, mm -hmm. if it was the solar version, you mm -hmm. could and literally your super takes up a slot, but there's only yes. one option. If you hover over it, nothing comes down. Yep. Right. So they're saying two things there. One, if they remade it that day, you could potentially just hover over, like you said, mm -hmm. Sunbreaker, and then you have burning mall to select right. from. So you can choose between multiple right. supers. Yep. But they're also saying maybe that, mm -hmm. you know, at some point whether they've introduced more darkness subclasses or not, we have a forsaken possibility where mm -hmm. we don't necessarily get a new darkness subclass. Maybe mm -hmm. we just get a new super for stasis. Like we mm -hmm. got new supers for the other elements. Right. Right. And, and that could yeah. be like, if they're not ready to introduce a whole new element and a whole new subclass, they're not ready for poison, right. but they're ready for, Hey, the behemoth has like something else. It has like a, a, a mace or something. I don't know. Right. Like a, you know, like, so that's mm -hmm. another very po interesting possibility. It's like, we got these oh, new yeah. subclasses. Could we be getting, like, an, a new super treatment at some point? Right. The the potential for variants and stuff. There, there's a lot of stuff here, man. I, I think this is definitely the direction that they, they intend on going. I just think it's one of those situations from a time and resource standpoint, they can't do it all at once. Yeah. So we are going to now... You know, systematically yeah. put this thing out per expansion or whatever, and we're going to get them in My tinfoil theory way. would require a lot of resources. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> will that actually happen? Probably not, to be honest. But yeah. who knows? Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, it does feel like at some point they're going to probably change them one at a time. We'll just have to see how it happens. Because to do all three subclasses in some big upheaval, well, yeah, remember that's, that's a bit substantial. I mean, this this is a little out there, but remember when they had like Arc Week, Solar Week, whatever, yes, and they like yes. when they did that, they had like pretty substantial overhauls, like even like new yes. abilities. Sometimes I still yep. remember Arc Week was the biggest letdown ever. <laughs> Yeah. I liked calendar. it though. No. From, a, from a meta stand, all right, it was trash. It, it was trash. trash. It was trash. We Arc week. What is this? Trash. Are you going to be like, is yeah. abilities going to be everywhere? No, it was literally no, that it was, was it the was subclass refresh. That was but as just a changing the subclass of sandbox changes and rework. Like for me, the geek in me was like, yo, they reworked. You know what I'm saying? Like so many yeah. aspects. Arc web came out at that time for top tree, I believe. Um, you know, stormcaller and stuff like that, and it really. Definitely change the subclass. Now, from a content perspective, yes, trash. But, Zero. <laughs> but, but yeah. from a from a meta perspective, there was some substantial changes. And I was there like, really yo, was, yeah. these older classes are now effective and I'm excited to play. And that stuff gets Can me Can they excited, have but, an exotic yeah. armor month or something where they rehash all the useless exotic armor? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Breach. There's a Go lot ahead. of work yeah, that needs done because there's a lot of no, stuff that doesn't get a lot that. of love. So Eon, mm. Eon Swift's baby. Oh my god, those need a whole. I that would be a so really cool thing to those get some love. I hit it with the hey. kawaii. I hit it with the kawaii. Oh, hey, that was dope, dude, dude. I mean, like <laughs> somehow with somehow they take up like fifty percent of your nightfall drops. Oh, and like, I've had so many of those possible. Drop? I don't. Get I know it either. it's ridiculous. I think I got like two in one day. And I didn't have that many challenges that I did or whatever. I had two of my three drops or something. I was like, get out of my inventory. And they both, and that's like my highest drop is probably like a 69 stat roll on an A on uh, safe. Yeah. I was just yeah. pissed. Oh, dude, I've got like a 69 A on Swift and I just hate my life for it. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I was like, I'm like, that's yeah, when you they, just well, shut it down and be like, hey, stream's over. I'll see you guys later. Yeah. And it was like crack stats too. I'm like, can you not give me this for the Dune Marchers or something? Like, come on. Why you got to <laughs> anything come in here at this Eon Swift? <laughs> Well, I do want to ask you guys, um, 400 well, legendary on, shards per, per, oh, uh, What's up? Before you continue, we just spoke about exotic armor. Yo, when is exotic armor catalyst going to come? Oh. They said that that was coming back in freaking Warmind. They're like, we're going to experiment with exotic armor catalyst soon. It's been Bruh. years, bro. Come on. Bruh. Exotic Bruh. Uh, armor needs you want, love, you want, but... You at the campfire, bro. We've been preaching this exotic armor lack of love for so long, bro. It, it literally gets just neglected. But continue, E. I'm with you, bro. No, no that's... at some point they gotta do it, and also they gotta re realistically they should really be introducing catalysts, essentially whenever they introduce a new exotic, or maybe one season later, because like right. an exotic without a catalyst is like objectively worse. Like yeah. I don't make masterwork shards, like right. or sorry, I don't make orbs, yeah. orbs, orbs of light. Mm -hmm. That's huge. Like orbs yeah. of the power fact, now, by the way. Especially, oh, really? well, especially <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're for changing um, in names. Okay. Especially for uh, Darkness, like primaries, not light. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. But especially for primaries, like I'm never gonna if I'm gonna use a primary in PVE, I gotta use one that's master masterwork, obviously. Fast. Fashion. Like so, so yeah. They really need to finish that off for the exotics. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. yeah, big time, big time. Somebody's like ice fall mantle catalyst, make the overshield last longer. Oh, oh my gosh! It's like it's already yes, gonna dude. be busted. But Anything, hey, I'm a any... titan. I get to enjoy it for a little while. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Facts, yeah, that works. Dude. We're gonna get to enjoy <laughs> it for like Love five it. minutes, and it's gonna get smashed into nah, the ground. Nah, nah. Bungie be letting y'all rock with them without them nerfs, man. Y'all be getting soon as the other warlocks and hunters get something that's broke, they be like, yo, we gotta nerf that imme effective immediately. Hey, us titans, 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 that one eye mask some, we need something in PVP, fam. okay? Hunters are fine. World, you look yeah. at Cactus. Cactus, yeah, listen, listen. Yo, there be whoever's on the balance team be letting the titans rock for a no, couple of uh, seasons with some yeah, you broken know why? stuff you know why because remember when they did guardian games and the hunters were like crying about guardian <laughs> games and literally the t and the hunters literally like said that the titans were like cheating and making duplicate <laughs> just the titans are making duplicate accounts and then bungie had to come out and show them the in-game data the and say no you you cry babies here's the literal <laughs> here's the literal data that shows that you're just not trying no. dude that was the best Dude, the hunters are at, like there. You can't even. If you're a hunter main, you gotta keep quiet for like three more years because of that. That was like the biggest embarrassment. Like, <laughs> oh, like, you hit us? like the Titan just came in with our little pea brains and just punched our way to victory, dude. And it was just the best thing ever. And warlocks, warlocks are. Like, I gotta admit, they were like up there for just vibing the entire yeah. time. <laughs> And just coming in second place, like second it was the whole so, time. Dude, the, the the numbers for like Titans and War and uh, Hunters like going up and down. Warlocks, Warlocks had like, the like same, this. They're just vibing the whole time <laughs> and like never got upset. They're yep, just like they're chilling. Just... Like second place is good. I don't know. Yeah, they're, they'll take that set, that silver. They're hey, they're on the podium. <laughs> Yo, they're sitting sitting. Yo, the Hunters yeah. is tight. The Hunters uh, is tight. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, yeah. he, he, it's some truth to what he's saying. No, I can't, I can't, I can't lie, man. I can't Dude, hold the, it. Da, when Bungie released the data proving that hunters were just was, not trying, like yeah. that was classic. <laughs> they had to. Everybody's like, they're cheating. They, and there's like video dude, it of was it, like. like it was like the dumbest audio. It was like Titans are cheating because they're making new classes and just redoing it. And it's like, well, mm. you can make any new yeah. class. And they're like, no, but the Titans are doing it. It's like, well, what's your proof that only Titans are doing it? It's like, well, because they're winning. It's like that's not. <laughs> That's not how it works, dude. That's not how evidence doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Yo, the hunters of our line was tight, bro. They was not feeling y'all that way. That guardian, yo, bro, they was not feeling hey, that statue. That statue every time we is by. sadly <laughs> fitting for what we got because it's sitting over there next to the Vala like an afterthought, so it's fine. It's not like a big grand statue. Yeah. It's this little like 
triumph that got tripped over in the corner. I hate so. to admit it too, silver and bronze for, mm-hmm. look pretty dope for the yeah, classic yeah. too. Gold, yeah. gold's a little too much, dude. It's like yeah, I don't need that uh, much uh, bling in my life. I'm sorry. Exactly, <laughs> dude. I've, I've never, no, I, no. That, yeah. So I will say, speaking Holy. of bling, uh, you guys are about to spend all of it trying to get your enhancement prisms. Four hundred legendary shards per. Prism. Uh, Dude, who would ever spend 400 legendary no. shards on a prism? That's have, insane. So how many shards do you have, Kakas? Because I know you got to have a crap. I have like 14,000. Like, and I, I got could, like, six, yeah, 16,000, something like that. Yeah, so it's like with mine, I could buy 37 prisms. I'm like, I could use my prisms and I couldn't even fill it back up with 14,000 shards. I'm like, the person who walks around with like 500 is like, no, it's, never, yeah. ever. It's like, crazy because like, who needs to buy shards? Like yeah. new and casual players, right? Because yeah. I can just get do GMs and I'll get right. all, or sorry, not shards, prisms. I'll get yeah. all my prisms from GMs, right? Mm-hmm. Easy, like super easy. Mm-hmm. So it's targeted towards new players that, you know, can't do a GM. They can't complete a GM, so they need to mm-hmm. buy it. But right. then it's like, dude, four, for those players, 400 shards is so much. Yeah, that's a lot, bro. Hey, like, oh my God, dude. Yeah, Spider is definitely. Hustling out here, my man. Hustling out here. He's <laughs> he putting down some work. Like Dude, this I'm is like out here, bro. <laughs> this is just like it just doesn't make any sense. It, it, it's like this. I feel like the spider is like the pawn shop. So he's like, best yeah. I can do is four hundred. Like, you're like <laughs> yeah, he like the pawn bro, shop. Come on, yeah. See, what it is is they they got rid of the the sequential increase, right? Because before, remember you you trade some stuff and then the price go up, then the price go up. So now they're trying to do this flat thing, but um, yeah, it's like. The only thing I agree with is the legendary shard removal as a as a um, current currency to buy from because who really is gonna come down for that? But the the prices for what they're asking for these shards or these prisms or whatever to me seem aimed at you guys, which is the content creator that has all this excessive well, currency. That's exactly who it's for. Yeah, that's literally what this they're, is like, they're like. They're looking they at want the you data to clean out your vault, and they want you guys to clean it out. That but that's like, how I look at it. Here's the thing: if you're a good content creator who actually plays the game. You, you again you can do gms bro like absolutely. i can do a gm easily like absolutely i don't need i will never buy i like there's already you can already buy shards right yeah. right and it, the return on them from the gunsmith isn't even great it's right. just a very confusing like again you would expect it to be for newer players but like a newer player should never give away 400 legendary mm-hmm. shards for a prism like no way dude <laughs> i i just thought yeah. weirdly enough the masterwork pricing change makes a lot more sense where yeah. it's you can only buy five but overall yeah. it's cheaper it's like okay yeah. that makes sense i agree i agree because that that and that is aimed at and will help the new players yes because it's like hey i need they probably don't need much more than five yeah. uh a day and mm-hmm. it's overall cheaper for them but you, you know you don't you can't go like insane and like buy like a thousand like right off the start mm-hmm. yeah man i'm with you what you think e Oh, I mean, I just thought it was ridiculous when I saw it because I was just, I literally pulled up. I was like, all right, how many shards do I have? I can buy this many. This I'm never going to do this. This is ridiculous. And then we have the enhancement like, course, which as well, where you're like, hey, I, it's I'm, 10, 20, 40, 80, 160. Yeah. I don't know who pays that much for them. I occasionally, if I see spider, I'm like, oh, I'll buy a couple shards. Yeah. Now, literally, you could currently buy two for the price of what it's going to be one in the future. So mm-hmm. I guess they. It, 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 yeah, like I, I don't think I've ever bought an enhancement core from spider. Like ever, no, no, I'm or in a, or obviously, no, like an, <laughs> like an, a, like a masterwork core. I've oh. never, you know, I'm too, no, I like, never, I'm too just busy. like to slowly build my collection. I'm like, oh, I have like 15,000 shards. I'll buy like you one get, or two. But as soon as it gets to 40, I'm like, yeah, as soon I'm as out. he goes up to 40, then I'm like, ah, you, yeah. you got so, so many, you get so many shards from if you do, and even just a normal amount of raids, you get yeah. the uh, masterwork versions, uh, the curated versions, a decent amount, and each of those give you seven, right. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's like that intermediate skill person. You know what I'm saying? And also, beat yeah. beat Pit. Pit gives you a guaranteed masterwork. There's seven shards True. right there. Yeah. Pit's True, not even hard. Three people pit. Easy, bro. Cac is in the defense of the casual base here. <laughs> Dude, uh, no, 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 listen. You are you would, hold, game on, talk. hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Normally, Gloves you'd off. be right. Normally, you'd be right. But uh-huh. this season, we got Falling Guillotine. It's a joke <laughs> of an encounter, dude. True. You literally just dupe the ball, which everyone knows how to do because yep. of the current public event, and then you throw up a bubble or a well and uh-huh. you just spin to win the entire time, and you will... Two people could could beat that boss in one phase 
easy with Fallen Guillotine. Oh, like, I've done it too many times with Ares. If like, you, you haven't go done it, thing. do it, bro. It's Yo, so easy right. right now. You're absolutely right. You know what I'm saying? The problem is that mid-tier to beginning level person they don't got those strats that you know, man. They don't know. They're coming into the game. What's this? What's uh, what's this uh, gun? What does I this guess. do? Carry me through this. Hence, the <laughs> dumb, hence why there's a lot of guides out there that have dummies on it. I don't know who makes those, though. I forget the guy. Shots fired. Some guy is. It's cool, <laughs> hey, it's cool I, content creator we don't make stuff. Clearly, yeah. that's, hey, I'm, yeah. hey, clearly that's who I'm making it for. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but <laughs> no, but it, it's uh, it, it really... Pit of Heresy is like easier than it's ever no, been. It's, it's just like it's, obviously yeah. finding... Finding a group is the hard part. Yeah. If you, but it's like just using LFG. People always like the the problem with LMG, LFGs is yeah they're toxic. They're toxic. Mm -hmm. They are. And, but, and you know, know what to do. Don't but, mess. Come on. That's intimidating to a new guy. Come on, but, cat. Come on. But <laughs> it you just mm. have to find one. You just have to find one True. good group, and you're golden, right? And then uh, then you have experience to help you mm -hmm. find more. And even if you, okay, so you play with two guys, one yeah. guy's super toxic, the other guy's chill, add that mm -hmm. other guy, and then try to get someone else with with him. Mm -hmm. Hey, now you can make an LFG and you're looking for one player. Right. And like, dude, it's so easy. A lot of like players yeah. that are just hardcore, it's like, I just want two teammates. Yeah. They could be basically, you know, completely new. I can still basically solo it. Like, mm -hmm. I see so many people who say oh i had a toxic lfg experience and it's right. like i'm and i'm never going back it's like okay mm -hmm. well it's like how many times have you tried lfg once so they had right. one bad experience and they're like yeah. never again it's what like well it, you just count that as a failed attempt it's like just keep mm -hmm. going in there and and again if you if meet someone nice meet someone good mm -hmm. one out of six people in a raid right. lfg if they're nice or good which is a pretty decent chance mm -hmm. Add them, and then you yeah. can just slowly build a team. Build and up a team. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, I but, agree. I agree. But people, they 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 try one LFG, it doesn't yeah. work out, and then they complain about and it on they... Twitter for eight hours a day. And then it's like, dude, use that Twitter time <laughs> <laughs> to be making to, up a new LFG. LFG. That's what we do, That's what we do. It's, we do it. <laughs> it's so true, though. Like, I mean, that's kind of one of those things. Any game you've for, ever played on, online, I will say, yeah. just really quickly, I will say yeah. to yeah. so I'm not like crapping on the casual players. Like, again, I know. How toxic LFGs are. The best example is when my squad was, when my team was the only team on console to beat well, yeah. uh, Crown of Sorrow. Yes, sir. M one of my guys from that team who had the emblem, again, there's six people in the mm. world who had yeah. that emblem on PlayStation, was trying to get a team, mm. and they said he didn't have enough clears and kicked him out. And he's the guy, the guy, <laughs> part of the See? team that beat it day yeah. one. It's That's like, this I'm guy saying. knows what he's doing. So, yes, I know LFGs Come are on. toxic as crap, but it only takes one. You only got to find one good one and you're set. Or And again, keep adding players that you play with that are that you find oh, LFGs yeah. that are good. Yeah. It's always the one toxic guy that ruins it, but the other guy, you know, the other five guys in the raid team are usually pretty chill, right? Yeah. So, you know. No, I feel your point. Like I said, I I understand both sides. I understand All your right. point, and I understand for for the casual guy. Sometimes that first experience is scarring, man. It it's, really you, is. You dude. No Zeno, no whisper. You're out of here, bro. Yeah, <laughs> must 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 have literally like must have the you know. Yeah. It, it, we're joking. The new raids are gonna come out, and the LFG po post the next day are gonna be like must have twenty four hour emblem, must have raid exotic, <laughs> must have five clears, <laughs> must have it's raid like, jacket. Yeah, that that jacket. Jacket. It, six months later you'll get it yeah exactly <laughs> oh, oh my god, god. No, no, what else we got here? I mean, no, there's no, a silver got, lining to all this stuff. At least all your sparrows are going to load quickly. So that mm -hmm. got to go fast. Hey, that's actually good. I was like, that's a good thing. And now the key is if you have a sparrow that has the instant yes. loader on it, dump it and go dump get one it. that actually gets you better perks. So you can actually that's have true. reloader and dodging and all that stuff that's better. Mm -hmm. Honestly, that's... apparently the best sparrow out there is the Scourge of the Past one because you have the, mm -hmm. I guess, extra health they on your you sparrow. Less. Yeah. Or whatever. they shoot How? you less. Yeah, yeah. they target oh, you yeah. less. Oh, yeah. So you, that thing has like three perks on it. But generally, I mean, that's a good thing, which is some one person did say the speed demon also does the auto reloading as well. So mm -hmm. you're actually kind of big, potentially losing both. So if you like those perks, just, you know, keep pulling those sparrows till you get them. But the fact that like this is everybody's wanted this for six years as well. So this is one of those finally little quality of life things where like, oh, it took you long enough. Well, I was like, also, everybody's always wanted this. Make all sparrows like 160, right? Isn't there a few 150s bumping around? Yeah, that is true. And it's <sighs> like if a, a sparrow's 150, see ya. Like, I'm never going to use it ever. Can there be a Yo, 180 Sk raid sparrow, please? Like, what? Yo, why, is, why not? Does anybody care about reloading those sparrows? <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, it's kind of right about that. <laughs> no, I don't think anybody actually cares. I'm just saying you can do something besides make sure it reloads fast. The I think perks the are pretty minimal. I literally think the reason they're capped at 160 is just because they like did the tests and like that is enough time to get through like a loading zone that they can actually mm. load it. If they're any faster, yeah. it might like hit a limit. That's yeah, probably why. Probably makes sense on the hardware. I always wondered about them. Yeah, I mean, especially pertaining to Spiral Racing League that we haven't seen. Hey, maybe maybe yeah, after yeah. Lightfall in this trilogy that they do, they finally drop the old consoles and it's only next gen and PCs only, and we can see what else they do from there. It's going to be life. a few years before they can drop it. They're like, yeah, that, yeah. You said maybe after this trilogy, right? After maybe Lightfall. after Lightfall. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Then that that would be reasonable timing for doing that. It feels Absolutely. like because we're going to get crossplay with Witch Queen, mm-hmm. and then Lightfall is going to be. Who knows? And then at that point, like, if you don't have a PS5 and you want to play Destiny Season 10 or Year 10, whatever that is, time to go next gen because we want to make it for that. Like, at that point... Uh, are you shunning the 30 frames per second, Gaber? No, I'm... <laughs> yes, actually, I am at that you, point, 100%. Are you VIPing them, sir? <laughs> I I, I gotta want, give you I want to see what Destiny looks like if it's Ooh. made for that stuff. That's the are key. Are you yeah. implying that those guys are holding back the development? Hundred percent. Hey. Hundred percent. I'm trying not to cuss, but yes. Hey, your eyes can't even see faster than thirty frames. Stop hating, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, I bet. I, I bet. Nowadays, with Xbox being like, yeah, you can finance an Xbox One S for like twenty five dollars a month and stuff, and still so, get oh, get the do uh, thirty five and get the Series X, please. Mm-hmm. That, that even then way. even then though it's like it's gonna be so easy to upgrade like that was the yeah. thing it's like for some people getting a 300 dollar console that's yeah. you know that's too much for them but it's like hey 35 or 25 oh. bucks a month like all access I'll, yeah that, i mean i just imagine when you're a, a you know a teenager or a kid yeah. trying to convince your parents like please Facts, please you know what i mean and now dude now you can be like mom 35 i'll pay you 35 bucks Facts. a month i can give you 35 bucks yeah. a month Facts. and they'll probably be like okay i'm like, sure it's getting done groceries dude. get done <laughs> yeah like that's the thing the pc gamers like to think they're on top and technically they are but it's like a convince yeah mom i need two thousand dollars for just my graphics card she's gonna be like get out of here you <laughs> idiot like, Ma, I went to 3090, yeah. so I was thinking. Yeah, I got exactly. a 3090. You can't even get a 3090 right now. What are you trying to do to me? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you're like, but Mom, it's only 700 bucks. It's like, and then you're like, but then I would, it's like the size mm. of a small bus. So I would need a new, <laughs> Ma, I would need a new motherboard. I need more RAM. I need a better, I need a different power system. I need a different cooling system. <laughs> Can I get that? That's a day, 144. It's $2,000 monitor to go with it, too. Like, I Mom, need that. I need it. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm t- that's what consoles are for. Consoles are a great introduction to yes. gaming. Scarrow's like, I feel per- Dude, Scarrow, I'm with you. I'm waiting for a new graphics card and a monitor as well. So I want these things. I'm with you, man. Trust me. Dude, Dude, like it. exactly three people on planet Earth were able to just take their graphics card out and replace it with a 39er. Every- everyone else had to get a completely different rig. I'm yeah, telling you. Thanks. Thanks. Mm-hmm. No doubt, man. Fun times. Fun <sighs> times. Well, apparently Eververse is going to have like, what? nine seasons basically go back three seasons and everything from one to then will be in yeah. in there i would I'd like to like... see them just drop mm-hmm. more bright engrams like when you get to that season 100 level just yeah. once you get one above 100 it's like every three you're like, oh i got three levels i got a bright engram and that's it i would love to see them do a little bit more post 100 just something i don't know what but something yeah i i'm fine with it like i just kind of take it as i get them and then sometimes i get you know exotic ornaments i'm like oh cool yeah, i go yeah. on for the thunderlord recently and i'm like oh sweet and mm-hmm. i was using it farming strikes when it was heavyweight and arc burn and it's just nice. like i just kind of get it as i i don't really care about that stuff and it, you gotta like to them it's like i'm okay with stuff like that where it is purely cosmetic and it's like mm-hmm. hey bungie's got to make some money and if you want to you know spend some money to get the dopest looking ornament that has like 0.2 inches of a longer barrel so like you know fallout plays so full like, i can make the video yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly like, oh, the, uh, the long the long barrel uh, always, always longer <laughs> I mean, that's uh, that's, what that's when it's a little sketchy when it, it's like, OK, if there's an actual range advantage. Oh, it, it's like it's super slight. But for me, I think the big thing is like and this happened in Call of Duty World War Two. It's like, yes, it's a purely cosmetic ornament. It doesn't have any changes on stats or damage mm-hmm. or anything. But is it not pay to win if mm-hmm. you have a substantially better sight picture? Because. Right. For, for it was really noticeable in Call of Duty World War II because 
you it took up attachment slots to put on a site. Put on it. Yep. So you would have certain cosmetic, you know, oh, only yep. cosmetically different guns Which that had way better, uh, yeah, way Fact. better iron sights. And you were mm -hmm. like, I don't need to use a sight with this. Like I can use other attachments. This is a huge advantage. Mm -hmm. Destiny, it's not that extreme, but like, right. man, certain like exotics have like a clean sight, and you put oh, it on, yeah. you're like, this is. Way yeah. easier to I use. I like the the uh, the Sate fourteen ornament on Vigilance Wing. Yeah, it's it, it's a better sight. It's cleaner than the actual Osiris. You know the low the what you call it things blocking your yeah. you know, oh, vision 100%. and stuff like that. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. recently with the uh, Cold Denial, the the yep. the ornament they changed Ooh. it now, but the ornament in the uh, seasons past had like way higher zoom factor. It's yes. just yes. super clean, and it, it was like, oh, well, this is just this is objectively better, I agree. right? Like, mm -hmm. so I wonder what they're going to do. They, at some point, they got to address that. Maybe they should, like, try to, like, keep the parameters of, like, keep the same amount of stuff mm -hmm. on your screen and not have a super clean sight yeah. uh, compared to one that's not. Because it does matter. It really does. It does matter. It does matter. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of them, actually, with the ornaments. Just reintroduce. Because sometimes, I got to be real, at least especially with armor. There's some armor that the functionality of the armor is really good, but it's ugly as hell. And I'm like, oh, yeah. I, as a warlock, we got a style, baby. So I, I need, like, when, like put it for example, I don't use this weapons one too much, but the, the, the ornament to the stag, the, you ever seen that one? Oh, that I one think is it, fire. The, I know, the, the, the second the, one. The perk freaking sucks. Like, oh, when you're yeah. dead or something, you'll yeah. put out a rift. And it's like, thanks. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, yeah, really it's, it's, a, it's a useless white one. Flagging but... over there. I'm okay. Come save me. <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> yeah. But it's just like well, over it, here, always... dead. There's a rift near me. You can find me next to my rift that didn't work, help. <laughs> find me okay. next to that dead rift. But yeah. no, I just love when when there's there's exotics that you know definitely give you that extra you know oomph to to use it because it looks better now. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. That's always like well, that. now with transmog, Ooh. dude, it's gonna be wild with transmog. Like. Yeah. Uh, really any armor is going to be open and you can just like, as soon as that comes in season 13, I think it is, or mm -hmm. maybe a They're little bit after, it, it's yeah. like, it's like, dude, that's crazy. Yeah. I can just have a whole Trials of Osiris get up and not, you know, mm -hmm. have to worry about putting on ornaments and all this yep. stuff. I think so it's do you, dope. Do you think at that point they've got to do something for, at that point, if they're ever going to do any revamp to armor, whether it be like mods or stats mattering or anything like that, because then if you don't, if you have like a set that you like the way it looks, either... Mm -hmm. The new armors that drop from new activities have to be absolutely fire for you to want mm -hmm. to go get them because you can make yourself look like all the cool old stuff mm -hmm. or they got to give you a reason to get like new armor and put that stuff on there. I'm just kind of curious when transmog comes, right. then what's your incentive to go get be like, well, hey, here's this new seasonal armor. Be like, dude, I look like a boss over <laughs> here and I'm already good. Like, what's the point? So I'll kind of be curious how they balance that equation. I think the simple answer to that is like, if you look at how they're changing the armor where they have a legacy mod slot and then they have a combat mod slot from like Season of Dawn down to, I think it includes Beyond Light for the light empowered stuff and the Warmind Cell stuff. Mm -hmm. So potentially if they just have a different, like a year four mod slot and it goes from Season 13 to Witch Queen mm -hmm. and all that applies like mods from that year Right. And so every year you have an incentive to get some good stat roll armor because right. they can equip certain yearly mods. Yep. Right. And so, it, you know, it's not as intense of a breakdown of like, you know, when it was every season, that was pretty brutal. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I do a lot. And I'm looking forward to the exotic slot. Sorry. The, no, the, no. Um, having exotics finally having the damn seasonal mod right mm -hmm. they're supposed to be adding that that oh, is yeah. huge that changes everything like yes i mean oh my goodness that changes everything because mm -hmm. you know often if you're making a really like a pure war mind cell build you had to yep. you not even put on an exotic because you're like dude i need power of rasputin or whatever now oh you can put it on and it oh, man bro, that's gonna be I got huge my builds bro i got my my, my lucent blades my supercharged mm -hmm. you know i got too, a lot like of fun yeah that's charge gonna, of light, yeah. yeah, Charge of yeah, Light's going to have some fun times with that as well. Mm -hmm. 100%, nice. yeah. Mm -hmm. What else we got? Uh, I mean, that's mostly it. Honestly, it's Go like on. we always have a lot of stuff to cover and we blow through it. And if we have no topics, we get off on tangents. But we also got to re respect this man's time. He's got some stuff to go do. So yes, sir. Yes, sir. I do want to wrap this one up. Um, I did want to ask one more question. This is kind of where we'll wrap it up. What is one thing you hope to be surprised by in Beyond Light? The Cackington. <laughs> Rick. Cackington the third. I want, I want the raid weapons to be unique. I want it to go back to 
where we have in like uh what's it called wrath of the machine weapons Woo! where yes. you had focus firefly you had steel uh you know medulla and the fourth times the charm or whatever it was called preach uh, it, brother preach it. and 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 those were and triple double and you had triple those double were, those were perks you could only get on those specific grade weapons preach it. Absolutely. and right now like with the garden of salvation grade weapons are boring they're so boring and i want to go back to that where it's like you know, maybe at some point, if they're on the raid weapons, they can be added into the world loot pool at a later time or whatever. Right. That's okay. But at least initially, I want to see some actual uniqueness within the raid loot. Yep. Yeah. I Absolutely. could not agree Nailed more. It. Yeah. On fire, brother. So I've been, we've been preaching that for the longest. I completely agree with you. That's what made Wrath of the Machine so cool. And one of my yep. favorite raid was raised from a reward standpoint. There was yep. probably no raid better. And I also think about things like, obviously, we have the pinnacle weapons that are going away. But think about something like Redrick's Broadsword that has a cool perk like Desperado. So now nothing can get Desperado. Like, how cool would it be to introduce that into a raid weapon or some yep. new perks in there? So now you incentivize legendary way weapons. The problem, they have been too focused. <laughs> They've been too yeah, speaking focused of focus. on. I know, right? My joint just went Actually, crazy. Actually, hold on. Been... Speaking of focus, advanced.gg, <laughs> you make sure you use code KHD. Uh, Let's send go. this man some love. There you go. Oh Let's go. My. Out of right. nowhere. Out of left field, dude. <laughs> that's, that yeah. segue is like champion style. Anyways, oh, continue. That was smooth. That was smooth. <laughs> that was smooth, sir. No, I just, I feel like, I mean, as much as I love Divinity 1K and all that, and, and Anarchy, that's, it's dope. That should always still be in there. But again, it shouldn't be the only farmable thing that I'm going after. I should be, like, when I get a raid weapon... It should be intrinsically have something like that, that no Different. other weapon has. Yeah, it give should you, make be me better farm. than your basic es strike weapons, like easily. Es Factual. Factual. Especially, especially, mm -hmm. you know, it didn't matter as much when it was Forsaken had a raid, then uh, Season of the Forge had a raid. Right. And then like it was now we got that lots gap. of raids. Yeah, exactly. If it's like one new raid a year, mm -hmm. like yeah, Vault of Glass is coming, but still, if it's one big raid for the whole year, that raid better have some desirable loot that it really is going to last a long time. Mm -hmm. What about you, Yo, Kyle? Shout out to Vagabondo. I just got a shout out. He said, E, did you have to do that for Cacus to fill the guest? Yeah, it's contractual. It <laughs> yeah. was contractual, it sir. Was, that was his uh, writer. That's, that's that was his writer on the podcast. He's like, we got to get a shout out, uh, man. Got to do it. We had to get, we had to put two plugs in, <laughs> oh reference Chick Cacus, and then get that popping. That was part of the contract. Yeah, those are my requirements. <laughs> no, I have more focus over here than I should. So I was like, believe me, I rip it all the time, but we got him on here, so I may as well give him some love. No, uh, so any yeah. question, E? Oh, I was going to say, what, what about it? you? What surprise are you hoping for? Um, narrative, man. Narrative, narrative beats. Um, cohesive connections to the next season. You know, I, I, I want cool stuff. I think they're going back to the original Destiny vision, which is dope. But I just, like I said, I just want this thing, the payoffs to be smooth, us to be on the edge of our seat. Because look, people, you know, Destiny has no story. Destiny has great story. Unfortunately, it's like buried in stuff that, you know, you can't find or it's all out of the game. <laughs> but when it's done right, man, it is, there's moments. And I think they have potential to have some moments. So I'm looking forward to that and the payoffs. And hopefully Osiris can get up off the floor and handle his business. That's what I'm about. For sure. <laughs> you <laughs> just want Osiris to not look like a chump by the end of yeah, this just, thing. Just get my man my, back to greatness. Thank my you. My favorite meme was like going and, so, and when it was your ghost talking, it's like, Osiris, one of the most powerful guardians of all time. <laughs> Smash cut to him just being like smacked to the ground. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. I got to hold this L. I got to hold this perfect. L. perfect. Yeah, that was amazing. For me, honestly... It was one of those things like we're getting a brand new destination, a whole new planet to mess with. We get Cosmodrome. Mm. We got Prophecy in Season of Arrivals, which was a giant surprise. But as much as I love dungeons, I want a surprise dungeon. That's... Come on, E. Let's do Come it. On. Come we're on. Doing you got to space. You, you, you get the raid. You get the raid. You got to space it out. I agree. It's dungeon and raid. Do it. Let's oh, go, baby. Dungeons are Dun some of the I best hate. stuff. Dungeons are some of my favorite stuff in this whole game. Oh, no, dungeons are fire. Dungeons what if you have what if you what if there's a deep stone crypt dungeon too? And it takes <sighs> place like it maybe like it Soul. goes like a different way than the raid or something like that. Yeah, you, like turn, there's a sign, the turn raid. left for the raid, turn right for the dungeon. Turn, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's crap. Now dungeon, yeah, now whoever's gonna check, dungeon unlocked after, after the, raid. the raid. Yeah, See, that fly, would be cool. Same way Shattered Throne did Ooh. that. Like again, I'm with you though for sure, Cognito. I'm with Scarrow. Continue. Mm -hmm. 
This past year would have yeah, been much less Scow painful. Said, I'd rather save a dungeon for a season with no raid. Because my thing is, we know the middle seasons be trash. Put the dust, don't front pack everything. I think everything Vault of Glass is going to be in that dead season in spring. That's one worse. of those seasons is going to have Vault. That would be Vault a good idea. Is one spring. season with a, with a, with a the, dungeon. The, and this the, way we kind of make it, you know. The big difference up. is you pay $40 for this expansion. You pay $10 for the other season. Exactly. So, if you're gonna like, pack, there's a reason they pack Ooh, all the content into Scarrow's one season. Down in the chat. Oh, come on, see Scarrow. Scarrow, see, there we go. We're not Thank you. Do that. See, Scarrow not and I think alike. Scarrow. I got you, man. I got you. See, Dude, you, you was all fire, like and you had to do either? that. I supported your raid videos when you're doing the music tracks, man. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that, Scarrow. Yeah. <laughs> Continue. Your all right, now that's all I got. Though we got to let this man get out of here yeah, and wrap up. Up. So mm-hmm. before we go, Cacus, the wor- the the platform is yours. Tell everybody who sees and hears this thing. What do you got coming? Where they can find you? I could tell them most of them, but dude, this one's yours. You got a lot of places where hey. they can find you. So uh, not to- really. Where you can find me? YouTube. Just <laughs> Cacus HD on Woo. YouTube, and I guess I got a Twitter as well at Rick Cacus. Pretty useless. Mm-hmm. It's just for memes and. uh <laughs> What am I doing? Beyond Light stuff, when it happens. That's basically it. There's a no, podcast no. out there that you do as well, sir. Come on, that is oh, some yeah. cool dudes you got kind of podcast there's that, with. Uh, it's sponsored too, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, it's fine by Advanced <laughs> GG, baby. Yeah, you can also... Advanced <laughs> GG, baby. Every Wednesday, uh, well, 9 p.m. Eastern, mm-hmm. uh, basically we talk about what platform MTash got banned on recently <laughs> and... Shout out to Tash. Fantastic. Hey, we gotta get the Tash yeah. on, man. Holla, tell the Tash to holla at us, man. We gotta get the oh, Tash on. He's too. too busy living in his mansion made of Ferraris <laughs> from freaking well, what's he's it got called? Ferraris, you got Lamborghinis, one of the two. <sighs> oh, dude. The, Tash has made, got a mansion made out of Lamborghinis after he <laughs> did that Genshin Impact stuff. My man's popping off. Yo, yeah. he balling. Yeah, yeah, shout out to awesome. yeah, The podcast mm-hmm. has been a ton of fun because, oh, man, just whatever. You know, Twitch. Every week does something <laughs> so dumb that we get to talk about. And it's just, they just never disappoint. They just, <laughs> they're just a content factory for us. And it's amazing. No doubt, man. Salute the CAC. Pull it up always, you know. And I should oh, mention, it's, always, oh, sorry, it's called the Real Gamer Hour Podcast. Yeah. I don't think I've said that yet. Probably should. Yes. yes, Real Gamer Hour Podcast. That's the YouTube too, right there, sir? Yeah. That's the name of it. There you go, man. Catch that. Fantastic. Also, um, shout out to True Vanguard and all them. And um, yo, dude, your content. One of the best content creators in the game, Rick Cacus. Mad respect Appreciate for you, that. mad love. And one thing, I got to shout you out, because one thing I like about Cac, he's one of the realists, bro. Like, some some content creators can get a little Hollywood. Now, my man, he's always been <laughs> real, 100%, and I have so much. <laughs> yo, he said that. Yo, <laughs> I ain't say that, Tash. Yeah, that was your man. I don't know what you're talking about. I caught him. He was just clearing but, his throat. Uh, I heard nothing. You know, yeah. being around a lot of content creators, like, he... I, you, you sense the genuineness. One of the realists, I remember we met back, was it 2018 or wherever it was we met, and we just kicked it and the vibe was dope. So salute to you, your continued success. I see you moving and grooving out here. Always a pleasure, sir. Always I appreciate you, that. You know, you know, you know. And Thank for you. me, yeah, Lord Cognito on Twitter, all that good stuff. I Lord Podcast on Sundays, the Lord's Day. And um, yo, check us out this week. We're going to have uh, Brandon Tyrell from IGN. We're going to get it popping with him, talk what's going on in the industry, talk about all the craziness with Halo Infinite, the shakeups, and stuff like that, and PS Plus, Ugh. new next generation consoles. So check us out Sunday, 11 a.m. Eastern, Iron Law Podcast on YouTube, on Twitch, and of course, LordsofGaming.net. Appreciate the support. The site is growing. Really got the love. And you know about that last word podcast with me and my man E. You already know what time it is with that. So what's up, E? Where do you can find you at? Me? E Bontis everywhere. It's easy. Twitch, mm-hmm. Twitter, YouTube. You can find me on all of them. Basically, kind of, you know, filling this last little 10 days until we all lose our mind on November 10th, basically, and we yes, don't sir. get to sleep anymore. I mean, mm-hmm. that's the thing. Anybody who covers video games in any aspect of journalism, content creation, streaming, nobody's sleeping, so they're just kind of taking a chill right now, and that's what we're all going to be doing. So Beyond Light is going to be exciting. But, sir, Rick, thank you very much for coming on. It is an Thanks absolute for pleasure. Me. Every always time we always have a blast. Um, but, yeah, for this episode, thank you guys very much. We got to get this man to the rest of his evening uh, for episode number 126, October 30th. It has been The, the Last Word. word.